So, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night, when I pay the sis. This is Matthew Bailey alongside my critical pad in crime, Ricardo Medina. Hello, hello, hello. And this is the first ever <laughs> BBB Radio slash retrospect review, sorry, Christmas special. Um, it initially was supposed to be about Christmas shows, you know what I mean, like sequels basically. But I just kind of changed my mind last minute and said, you know what? There's a movie that, you know, we all saw around Christmas time back in 2001. And it celebrated, it celebrated its 20th anniversary. So you might as well talk about it. Of course, we're talking about Lord of the Rings, The Fellowship of the Ring, right? You know what I mean? Released in, you know, 2001. Um, and, you know, it's just, you know, it's, it's, it's just the mere fact that 20 years have passed. Though, and this movie, uh, just, just getting it all the way, still holds up, like, like amazingly so, you know what I mean? But you know, I, I, you know, Ricardo and I, you know, we we just couldn't do this by ourselves. So uh, we invited, you know, um, Daniel Lom Young. Hi everybody, good to be here. Yes, yes, yes. Um, he was the one who actually brought up. Well, fun fact, he brought up that whole 20th anniversary thing um, earlier on, right? I I had it noted, but I was like, uh, I don't know if I had time, you know, in December to do it. But you know, he brought it up, and I was like, all right, we we need to do this together. So yeah, this is the, this is literally him just being on the show for the first time. Um, also a first timer will be my good friend. Uh, you know me, my, my, what's he what I'm looking for? Uh, one one of my BFFs uh, for sure. Uh, and in my opinion, one of the probably one of, if not the biggest LOT LOTR fans out there, Nurisha Sabdin. Hi. I love how you said hi. What's like, uh, <laughs> <laughs> what is going on yes. here? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, that's, that's, awesome. just play, just play, just play. Yeah. I'm his little hobbit. His little hobbit. You mind? You mind elaborating on his? Come on. Also, everybody in the group. Everyone no, I, I know, it. but the people who that who listen does know. No, okay, so so basically she's she's referring to her husband, right? Who um I, I, I hope is going to stay quiet for the next couple of hours, yes. right? <laughs> walked outside. I hope he says stay there for a while. Yeah. I mean you'll be fine, you'll be fine, right? So yes, we're gonna talk about, you know, the first Lord of the Rings um film, you know what I mean? Um of course directed by the man the myth the legend himself, Peter Jackson. And you know, as as we normally do on retrospect reviews, you know what I mean, it's not just solely about talking about the film itself. We have to kinda of talk about our experiences with it, like especially when we saw it for the first time, right? So um I'll I'll kick things off and you know, then we'll just go on to everybody else, right? So I'll I'll try to keep things short and sweet, right? So Fellowship of the Ring, right? Um, I remember the trailers for it being on TV, on cable in, in particular, because I had cable at the time. Um, I saw it when it came out in theaters in um, December. Um, I don't think it, it was out on the 19th, you know, the, the actual official, you know, release date. But I saw it a few days afterwards, right? Um, I, I went in just blind, like just not knowing anything about the world of Lord of the Rings, right? I had no clue what a Hobbit was. I, I, I've never even seen, like... Um, the you know the animated Hobbit film from like the late seventies. I've never saw anything like that, right? And literally from the opening shot to the very end, when you see directed by Peter Jackson, I was just roped into this. I was just in awe of this world. Um, I was just amazed at how rich the storytelling was and how captivating and engaging the story was. Um, it and it just really liked kneel the tension because there's a lot of tension in this in this particular film um, i would say though and i didn't expect it to go this deep and this dark now, but it did um the, the the three hours this film took you know we are talking about the theatrical cut here just flew so so fast I, i'll never forget like the tiny mo- uh, the movie ended like seeing it in theaters you were like wait that's it like literally they was like wait done you know what i mean okay just had we, we, just, we just had so much fun seeing it now so um cut to like a year later on it aired on on stars and i i watched it there and I would just always find myself just kind of rewatching it there on cable, right? Um, eventually, I would buy it on um, on Blu-ray. I have the extended editions for for all three of them. Um, and actually, uh, there was a point in time when the extended cuts were on on cable, right? Not just for Fellowship of the Ring, but for the Two Towers and you know the um, Return of the King, right? So just to touch quickly on the on the trilogy itself, I would say you know maybe Ricardo, you could tell me if I'm wrong or not. I think to me this is the perfect film trilogy, absolutely um, perfect. Not well. Uh, perfect is a strong word, but it is right. pong for pong, pong for pong. One of the best film trilogies, if not the best film trilogy, in my opinion. Right. In, right. in well, modern in modern cinema. 
Yeah. Yeah. Well, what what I mean though is that you know normally when it comes to trilogies, you start off very strong, right? Um, like a Godfather or Star Wars, you elevate the the the, the story with the sequel, like say Godfather Part Two or Empire Strikes Back, right? But when you hit that tree, cool boy is like, uh, yeah. so that's Godfather Part Three. And yeah. sorry, sorry, Star Wars fans, uh, Return of the Jedi. I mean, sorry, I mean it's a great end, but it's not perfect. It's not, I don't right. know. It just peels slightly in comparison to the first, right? But yeah, but yeah, you know the tree cool in particular is the hardest thing to get by, because remember you have the audience investing in the story and just want to end it off high and Usually that's where it falls by. But this one was like, no, we are telling a full story, but it's and I think that's the key to it. It's telling a full story, but we know exactly where to divide things. So you know, you're getting. This this um this third in you know the, the first film this third in the other one the third in the other one right so when that when that finale hit though that was just like yeah like we just going hard like all cylinders like going off now and yeah like I will never forget seeing Return of the King um basically Christmas weekend like after Christmas and just being blown away though that that literally was an event like just one of the biggest cinematic events I ever had in my life right and it was even and it just it was just satisfying just totally satisfying right. And even greater is the fact that it just won so much Oscars, though. It included Best Picture of the Year. And I mean, that's like amazing. I think right now that's the only fancy film to ever uh, win, you know, um, that, that amount of awards, right? But yeah, I mean, from from just seeing that whole trilogy played out, I was in love with it. Um, I wouldn't say that I'm the biggest fan of the series because not like I, I remember certain, you know, items or character names now, but you know the gist of the story and how everything plays out, right? And, you know, just yeah. revisiting this film here, I was just like, yeah, this is this kind of taking me back to when I just literally used to remember scenes and just how they all play out now. So, yeah, I just had a blast re- revisiting this film here, right? And uh, well, last thing last, um, this, this film in particular made me really appreciate Peter Jackson, right? Because um, right. I think before um, watching this movie here, the only film I saw from him was uh, the Frighteners. I think that was that was right. the first thing I saw from her, from him, right? Yeah, he was he was kind of like um, similar to Sam Raimi, a lot of schlocky horror stuff. And yes, which I'll bring he, up here. Yeah. Right, but he broke in. He well, I'll say is the main reason he broke into Hollywood is because of Heavenly Creatures. Yeah, which I saw after the fact. I actually saw it right. on Stars too, and I was like, yeah, hey, I think I think he got. I think, I think that got nominated for best screenplay at the time or something like that. I forget the exact, but he he basically broke in. Like that was yeah, the he breaking did. in. Um, mm. From that point, yeah. so like he had a lot of leverage and pull um, in the studio, and it, it had a really fascinating history. Um, this film now, because I think he was shopping it around. He had like about a month to shop it, and they were pushing for two films. Yeah, and, and then and, it was at Miramax. Right, and then it switched, and then they when the the person who pushed, I forget the producer's name, but the guy who pushed it said, "Well, no, I want three films." And like uh, Jackson was like, "All right, cool." You yeah, know, which, Robert Robert Shea, Robert Shea. Yeah. Yeah, okay, and okay. They were like, okay, cool. They they are pushing that up and, and making it work for what it is. Um, yeah, I um, you know, it's, it's, it's an interesting set of um, con- conditions that had to make out um with this film. So I suppose I could step into my my um take on the matter. All right. Uh, well, I was just gonna say one last thing about Peter Jackson. Though. Okay, so sure. Yeah, like I that that was, that was the show that really introduced me to to him. There, and you're right, it was in schlocky films because later on I would find you know his debut feature, Bad Taste, which he literally shot over the course of two years on weekends with his friends. This this yeah. really like gross out, you know, sci-fi comedy. Um y- y'all should check it out if you haven't seen it. It's dope, right? Um, you know, meet the Feebles, which is a really dark and twisted but funny as hell version of the Muppet show, right? That was that was that was awesome, right? But for me, what really made me like appreciate him, you know, before the rings now was Dead Alive though. That was when I was like, yeah, yeah this 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 guy is the truth. Cause it was like taking Sam Raimi Evil Dead and just amped it up by five now. You know what I mean? But yeah, I mean Peter Jackson remains one of my favorite directors. Um after that I mean, he did the Hobbit trilogy, which I like, but ultimately, it's like, did we really need it? Yeah, uh, that, was, that was pointless. That was pointless, and I still and I still annoyed that Del Toro didn't do that. Didn't get you know? <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, and you know, even though he's not doing the trilogy stuff for the big budget stuff per se, um, you know, he's still putting out great work, right? So, um, he he did, he had that documentary, They Should Not Grow Old, and last thing, quite recently, he dropped um the Beatles Get Back, which actually covered right. the first two episodes of and. Actually, before we met up here online, I watched the third episode and I was like, yeah, this is one of my favorite shows of, of the year, bar none, man. So yeah, Peter Jackson's a guy I totally respect. And I forgot to mention, King Kong, his 2005 right. yeah. remake of it, still, still yeah. my favorite 
um, version of the you know King Kong, in my opinion, right? Yeah, he just knocked it out of the park with, with that show in particular, right? But yeah, he's a guy that I absolutely respect as a filmmaker, though, as a New Zealander, and being able to, right. to to take audiences to New Zealand, right, and basically sell you know the country as well too. And he just did that with this trilogy right here, in my opinion, right? Yeah. So, uh, Ricardo, take it away. How you got into you know this movie? Yeah. So yeah, my I think my then back in the mid nineties aunt boyfriend was really into it, and so he got me into the books. Uh, last I heard, that dude has leukemia, but I think he's still alive. Whatever. Uh, yeah, he he can. I got me into the books. I was I, into the world, but like because I'm more of a a sci fi person and a fantasy person. I never really got into it, into it that much. And I think it's only because of like stuff like the more dark fantasy stuff like Diablo that kind of got me back into fantasy um, with, with respect to that. So like, oh yeah, let me just reread these books. And then the books came out. Um, sorry, the, the the film was trying to push, they pushed for that. And between this and Harry Potter, like fantasy was having a big, you know, thing. Like in, in that. Yeah, uh, that sort period. of a boom, if you will. A little, yeah, a, a little bit. Yeah, because it's, yeah. Right, it's, it's this and Harry Potter came out. Uh, what, Harry Potter was what, November, I think? Um, the first one. Um, so, what, what was it? Stone. Was it Sorcerer Stone? Was it? Yeah, was it November of uh, two thousand one? I yeah, it was. exactly. Yeah, yeah and November, then, uh, November two thousand one. Yeah, right. So, and then, right. and then, uh, and then, what it is why? Right, and then it was the same year. Another big kind of like confluence of of things in history is is uh nine eleven, right? Uh, or oh, anybody remember how it had a big dumb thing about um the, the twin towers and the two towers being nothing? It was dumb. Um, oh God! Anyway, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was really? that was a thing. It was stupid. Anyway. Uh, yeah, this was like the first time people kind of was you now coming back out to, to, to theaters and like, oh, this is a big pop culture thing that kind of make us forget about the weird shitty bullshit that's going on in the world. And it just, um, this, this film I thought just did such a great job of just, um, just a lot of like smart choices, like compared to the books. And we were going to get into that, like stuff like, look, I'm, I don't know. I only have one friend who's defenders and, and, but I, I, I am in the camp of saying, no, it's a great idea. Um, cutting out Tom Bombadil, for example, or like making a bunch of cuts and, and, you know, um, conflict, conflict changes from the book and just having it flaws a film better. And yeah, that's why this film works so well. Personally, I think this is the best film of the trilogy. It's not my favorite. But I think this one is the most structurally coherent and and flows better as a story. And right. yeah, I, I, I thought it was a series too. The King was was your no, favorite. Or no, actually, seeing no, your, no, no, your, no, your 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 history with it now. Agreed. The Return of the King is my favorite, but it's not the best one. Right? I don't ah, think this, okay, I don't okay. Think I got you. One. I think this one is the mm-hmm. best one. It this one's the most again structurally. It's the best film. Like just from a content standpoint, how it flows and how the what 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 decisions was made. It's not the most right. fun, but it's still pretty damn cool. And yeah, they just made a bunch of great, great choices about it. How it how it flows really well. Um, smart decision making that that other films come after coming after it made mistakes and fall into the trap too. Uh, but I, I've I've been on record about saying this is that this avoided the mistake that Warcraft made by you know just running through the story in a smarter way and building it up to the point in time where you need to tell this when it comes to to um, you know, the world building of, of Tolkien, because it's, remember, Tolkien is this insanely massive universe and gods and creatures and whatnot, and wherever it is, right? And Maya and all of that bullshit. And yeah, they make it, they make it, he make it real work, like just a lot of really goddamn smart choices, good acting, um, you know, great choices for, for casting. Uh, well, there's yes. a quick look. Again, there's just a bunch of trivia shit we could, we could, we could talk about, like how, you know, Viggo Mortensen wasn't casted on, uh, even until after the, the film started. Like, mm-hmm. that, oh, wow, that's okay, didn't know that. Like, yeah, yeah, because, yeah. like, it, it shows they started filming, like, about a couple of days, and then he was casted. I think um, this guy from... Uh, Queen of the Dam, Queen of the Dam. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, um, who is yeah, this? Stuart, 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 Stuart Thompson. Yeah, Thompson, right, right. Yeah, he was supposed to be the, 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 uh, one of the early choices, for example. Um, stuff like who to choose for Elrond, that was kind of a weird choice. And they, they were supposed to have, um, this one, boy, boy, right? Boy. Yeah. Boy, he was supposed to be thing. Right. There's little stuff like that. Uh, yeah, I, um, genuinely really like this movie. It's a lot of really smart calls. It's reasonably well done. And I dug it for what it is. Like it, it's just a bunch of smart decisions. It's just good filmmaking all, all around, you know, st- simple things like, like, like forced perspective and, you know, utilization of that. It's just just conscious. Like they just just great filmmaking our own good production and they make it work. There's something about it that we could probably talk about in terms of the larger production that was that became a kind of nightmare scenario for 
um, the New Zealand film industry. There's a whole thing about that 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 was kind of weird. Um, okay. But yeah, that's a different thing. That'll come after. You only notice it when the the Hobbit films was being made. But at the time, it's like, nah, this was the best thing to ever happen to New Zealand um, in, a, in a long time. So it's like, yeah, would. Ah, uh, yeah. Um, absolutely love this film for what it is. I, and yeah, we could talk about this. I no problem. With that. All right, uh, Nerisha, your your history with um, with with the Lord of the Rings films. Or I should say, I honestly, in particular, this one here. I honestly can't remember where I went to see it, why, but I do know after watching the first one, and I bought the Harry Potter books, I believe, I ended up buying all three books. I even got a Return of the King, um, no, two towers from my grand, my great, my grandfather to tell you how long he had it. <clears throat> but I went like reading those books and watching the movie completely is two completely different scenarios. The book was a little bit tedious. <laughs> I right. actually love how Peter Jackson they they made the movie. They they put so much into it just watching the reading the book and watching the movie. It it was a smooth transition in my opinion. And adding in Arwen into the um into the mix, especially when he she came to to help um save Frodo from being stabbed. When it was yeah. somebody else, it was a nice yeah yeah they, 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 yeah yeah. I think they combined two characters. I forget what the other character, Elwin. Um, I can't remember. Is it, is it, it, yeah. it a guy? It was a guy. I think right. it was a, right. Yeah. Well, they, 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 that's a running joke too. Um, it is why Arwen Arwen warrior princess, right? Like that was a big <laughs> joke about that at yeah. the time. Cause it's like everybody's yes. like, cause I, I remember I remember watching the scene. I was like, wait, this was in the book. What? What? No, this was it wasn't in the book. But it was in the book. It, well. But it was hard. <laughs> it was. Yeah, but yeah. it worked. It worked. Yeah. It bring yeah. it. It introduced her to the yeah. to the um, to the audience, yeah. and it yeah. worked. Hmm. You know, and it didn't make her like it's typical woman woman like feminine, feminine. Right. You know, she, she was like. She was like, you know, she could hold her end the same way how Eowyn holds her end too. Right. It wasn't like Sophie, Sophie, if I could say that. <laughs> yeah, well, th- th- right. So you could tell, you could tell there, again, only in retrospect, I could tell this stuff, but I, I remember the time you could tell like that was like a clear change and a cut. So they had mm-hmm. to do this thing to hype her up. Again, this is a, a Peter Jackson thing. Like he's always contrived a conflict just to hype it up for the, negative, for the sake of our film, right? And but then she kind of goes back to that passive role later. And like, okay, yeah. Uh, yeah, right. Yeah, go ahead. And he, he did the same thing in Return of the King when yeah. uh, when um, Gollum kind of pitched the bread over the side and he yeah, blamed yeah. Sam. Um, right. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, it's a bunch of like a bunch of conflicts he had to do just to fill up the space now. Yeah, he did it. He, he yeah, did that in all the films. Like, he does that. All. It, yeah. worked. it worked though. Right, yeah, no, it's a, it's a smart call because like, yeah, film is a totally different medium. You had to understand what you're doing with that. And it's just, yeah, the, the dude is a great filmmaker in that way. He just understand, he, as, again, Pong for Pong, one of the best adaptation people. Again, the analogy mm-hmm. I make to War, Warcraft, Warcraft like really, really fell flat in terms of that, making those mistakes now and avoiding all the, the pitfalls. They, they just knew exactly what kind of decisions to make to avoid this stuff and just keep, keep people hype. I think, I think it's done to a toxic level with, with The Hobbit, but like for this, Oh God, don't go don't go to Hobbit. Right, right. <laughs> it should have been two movies, not one. Like, no, it, forget, right? it should have been one it movie. It should have been one. It should have been I, one I, movie. One yeah, long movie. That's fine. Not that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. One long movie. Ridiculousness. Anyway, I have yeah, it's, it, oh, and the Hobbit was like that book, I can read that book over and over and over. Yeah. But in movies was no. Yeah. Yeah. They, they, it's, it's moment. Around, I couldn't bring myself to sit down and watch it. Yeah. I, I, I saw all three of them in, in theaters. I, I think we went to see the first one. I think it was the first or the second one, right? But um, I never forget Desolation of Smog, right? Which arguably is the best one, but I've not really seen a lot. When you take in, because I remember I go into this completely blind, right? Like, oh, yeah, like, Smog going to get killed, right? And you think, okay, Smog dead. And then she nope. literally ends like, nope, Smog nope. dead. The nope. end. Nope. <laughs> Directed by the Peter Jackson. I, what? The only reason I was hyped about Smog was because the voice who was voicing him that was of it. course um but, but, yeah. 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 <laughs> that was it other than that i said i'm gonna watch that i was like what well, can i <clears throat> all right no fucking i go on i <laughs> leave time watching it i was like nope nope definitely <laughs> not 
definitely not. But I will mm. always remember my reaction in the uh, going to see Desolation of Smog, and when it came to the final shot of Bilbo watching Smog go to desolate the river town, the, the lake town, and um, <laughs> he's like, "What have we done? Cut to black!" Yeah. And, and the yeah. whole the whole theater was like, yeah. "What? Yeah, what piss me so, off." What? What? A real waste time. No. It, it, it's, it's nonsense. Total nonsense. Because from the time I know, but it, even with the first film, eh, from the time I see that, oh, what do you do with the barrel scene? Like, are you serious with this? Like it hard, eh? I'd say no. <laughs> but, <laughs> like, what is nonsense? What is this nonsense? Boom. Who's all this boom. crap? Boom, boom. And then they're knocking down all the orcs. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's like, what's all it's of this? It's a video yeah. game. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, total. Anyway, anyway, back to... Yeah, back to but, but, but yeah, are you sure? Yeah, you could continue. Yeah, um, but that's... that's that out of all the fellowship of the wings was really yeah it was smooth had no no really set of complaints or anything you know it was something i think what it was when i saw it, it was close to the end when um sam and frodo went on their own i was like um i need you need to continue this right now you need to mm-hmm. you need to mm-hmm. Because I was like, I wanted to know what's going to happen, and that's the reason why I went and got the books. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Nice. Because <laughs> mm-hmm. I wanted to know what will happen to Frodo and Sam. All right, all right, all right. And to me, in the whole thing, the whole hero to me is, is Sam. Right. <laughs> yeah, and, and you really feel that like in the last one, but like they, 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 <laughs> they, they, they pretty much remind you, yeah, I mean, Sam is, is the, he's, he's the writer, the hydrant. He was there, he, he really supports her. Uh, Frodo, you know, we, especially with the numerous moments where Frodo just gave into the ring or just like flat or to give up, you know. Yeah. No, remember the ring was getting to Frodo. Eh? Yeah, he, I know. he reached the point that he was like taking taking Sam for granted. You know, we but Sam still, you know, showed showed his brave how brave he is and stand his ground when it comes to Frodo and what he had to do to make sure that they destroy that ring. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah. Okay, all right. And last but not least, uh, Daniel, your 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 history with um, Fellowship of the Ring and the other films. Well, uh, two thousand one, I was still young. Two thousand two, I was still young. I didn't get introduced to the series until like two thousand three, when it was like showing on stars. And it was my cousin who actually introduced me to this. She was like, "Have you seen Lord of the Rings?" I was like, "Um, no." And and, uh, and she just flicked it onto me, and from I didn't get hooked in at first, but by the time it got to like that middle when they got to the the um the bridge. Oh um, boy! Of Ka- we'll talk about Kaza. that bridge scene. Yeah, yeah, the bridge of Casa Doom. I was like, yeah, <laughs> oh, I'm hooked. I'm hooked now. I need to see the story. You can continue. I want to see what happens. I want to see what happens. So like yeah, yeah, and um, I saw then I saw two towers afterwards on stars. And I was like, okay, Return of the King, I'll go into the theater. And I, and I went to the theater to see Return of the King <laughs> with my dad. And it's like, I was like the most popular kid in school after that. Like, everybody wanted to know what, what, what was it like? What was it like? What was it like? So, yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. So, no, yeah. Well, like, Return of the King was like one of the best post Christmas gifts anybody could get by. Yeah, for real. Eh? <laughs> I, I, saw, I saw that with my family. It was like me, mom, cousins and couple aunts and then all of us like four or five hours went to see it Christmas night uh, nice on, and, and what happens at movie town sold out so we had to go globe right which is hilarious because it's like the first yeah. time you see white people are the dead people in globe like that's funny as hell <laughs> uh, but it, it was there and you know what you know what the, what trailer came out at that time um, that was when Spider-Man 2 first trailer came out that one way oh. he touched car mm. oh yeah and, and that had, yeah. That had, that had uh, the audience totally like melting down over that shit no, yeah. of course. That, that scene most, is, most, is brilliant. Most, most people don't have internet access then, or at least not in the same way that we do have now, right? So, like, that was everybody seeing that for the first time, but I saw it. And I was like, I told, I told my, again, same aunt's boyfriend we went to see it with the guy who introduced me to Lord of the Rings. He, I was like, oh, dude, look at this, you know, how hyped this going to be. And then, I, I was so shocked to see everybody melting down over the thing. I was like, all right, well, then, when, when the movie come out, then everybody go blow up. Yeah, that's exactly what happened. It's probably one of my favorite theater experiences ever. Um, yeah. Seeing that mm. film. Yeah, uh, okay, yeah. Anyway, go ahead, on, Daniel. No, no, that 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 was just that's my experience, and ever since then, I it's like a tradition now to watch it at Christmas time. 
Lord of the Rings, the Lord of the Rings movies. Yeah. And I watched it yesterday actually to prepare for this. And it's like it just hits you with that nostalgia vibe. So like, let's get into it. Let's get into yeah. this. Let's let's go. Yeah. Do I have to? I don't think I did that. <laughs> oh really? It's not. Yeah. A, it's not I, a... I don't. I think um, my husband ended up from streaming um, a Christmas Carol with Patrick Stewart. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, I, that one. pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah but, I I just watch I just watch like my still my favorite one of my favorite Christmas movies. Uh, still well, other than Die Hard, right? Uh, oh, yeah. uh, for me is um the the Bill Murray Scrooged. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. I dig the I dig the hell out of that. I'm no probably watching it all the time, so it's like fine. All right, well, <laughs> well, well, my go-to Christmas movie I watch it every single Christmas day is a Christmas story. I I, I love that right. show. That, that that show just just speaks to me. You know? Don't judge, yeah. don't ju- don't judge me. But my favorite, my the one that I kind of like is the Jim Carrey one. Don't yeah, judge the, me. The, the, that Robert this one. Yeah, that that one yeah. okay too. Yeah, that actually pretty good. Yeah. 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 It was kind of yeah. disturbing in the end. It right. got kind of disturbing, but it's like okay. I, I can I can do with this. No, yeah. no, it's, it's it's just Jim Carrey. Just just he 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 Mugging. immersed himself into that character, the Grinch. But he just went yeah. all in by like say what you want about everything just being so over the top. But you know, nah, Jim Carrey made that thing with uh with overall. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, just just any quick thoughts on you know the 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 Hobbit trilogy and well, I, I, I should say about um Peter um sorry Pete, yeah Peter Jackson as a whole. Peter Jackson. Uh. I haven't seen his entire filmography. I saw King Kong, which I honestly have my opinions about. I do. I really don't think that movie should have been three hours long. <laughs> but true, that, that, true, true, true. But but he 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 kept he he, he kept your butt on his seat though. I yeah. give him that. Yeah, it, it run for way too long, and it's even worse. There is a director's cut. Well, I should say I extended oh. version of it, which runs <laughs> an extra half hour. I seen I've seen it. Yes, but. He, he always finds a way to keep you like glued to the screen, though. Like I won't lie. But yeah, go on. Uh, yeah, but but and he really made me feel the way he felt when he saw King Kong for the first time because, from his experience watching King Kong, he said that he cried the first time he saw it. And yeah, when I saw his version of King Kong, I was, I didn't cry, but I was emotional. I was like, wow. That, that ending, boy, was was a wow. good you, you know what gonna happen, eh? but when it happens, like, God, boy, why, why? why? When, <laughs> you know? when King Kong fall off this side, I was like, oh God. Yeah, and is that but, shot where the camera just kind of does a one eighty, and you just see it revolve around? Is like, it's just brilliant. I love, I love that scene. But yeah, go on. Oh, yeah. He his he has kind of his filmmaking as of late is kind of like dipping because we all talk about the Hobbit trilogy, uh, not that great. The, yeah, lovely, yeah. the lovely the lovely bones that he right. made. Well, oh uh, yeah, and, and I, that, I I skipped that show. And skip the sad part is that the, the 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 more drama behind those two projects is more behind the scenes drama. Like it's mm-hmm. not like I, I can't say it's his fault per se. But like when you find out like you like that backstory behind the production and it's like an insanely pathological backstory, especially what happens to the New Zealand film industry after. It's mm. like that is my nightmare scenario for like Trinidad. Like we'll get a big movie and it will just completely ruin us. Like, you know, whoever will be part of that movie, it'll be, it'll be great for them. And then that's it. We'll never pull off anything like that again because it'll completely ruin us. That's basically what happened to New Zealand and the Lord of the Rings. Like it's absolutely insane what happened there with our backstory. And then my lovely bones. I don't know if anybody following that story, like the author. Anyone knows the, the really like super disturbing shit going on with that? I mean, I don't want to say it here because it's like it took, it kinda of pissed him off. But yeah, the <laughs> no, author I'll, I'll, I'll have to look it up though. That, yeah, that's look it up. I just saw the premise of that show. I was like, nope, I I, I go with that. Don't, so no. don't spend too much time about what happened to the what going on with the author right now, but it's really, really goddamn sad. Um but anyway, um yeah. Yeah, he like Peter Jackson was getting these weird projects, and then again, sadly, you know, we meant you mentioned Miramax earlier. Yeah, 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 the wine scenes, right? Right, the wine scenes, yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah. so it's all of that noise. Yeah, he the sad part is that you know, that is where that is the, the, the soil, you know, if, if the soil poison, the plant can't grow, and you know, he's one of those, right? He just get in a good time as a as a filmmaker, and you know, he you know in a kind of weird space right now. Like, I, I don't think he's not any kind of problematic person himself i don't think so as far as i know mm-hmm. but he associated with the bullshit and he get pulled down that's unfortunate and I, I can't like i really can't see him like look if he come back and do some big great like a lot of my early 90s people you know bringing back some hot shit nowadays right you know two men in particular 
you know, coming back right now, right? Like, uh, what do you call him? Robocop, yeah, director Robocop. Paul you know, yeah, yeah, uh, Paul yeah, Paul yeah Paul Paul. did, did uh, again, I don't, I don't spoil any list for the year, but he did my thing. Yeah. I, I, I need, I need to watch Benedetta though. Yeah, that's, right. That's and then, um, and then, and then Moonfall, right? Moonfall looking hard again. Oh, Roland yeah, Emmerich. Yeah, Emmerich, right? Emmerich. Looking silly, but you know, I, 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 uh, same thing. Like it's just he as a filmmaker kind of in this weird space, and he kind of had to get out of the bullshit. Road. Like I don't know what gotta happen. Get, game, game, something on on Netflix or something. But I know. But the uh, longest time I heard that he was attached to do that Tintin movie, like the sequel right. to, um, what was that? The Adventures of Tintin. Right. He yeah. was um, attached yeah. to that, and right. I don't know what the hell going on with that. So. Right. Right. Yeah, but that that that, that that's a whole thing by itself. Because yeah, again, I'm a very big fan of Tintin. Thing. I'm one of the few who defend that film. Um and yeah yeah it was, it was, good. It was yeah, good. pretty good. Was good yeah yeah that was the first show I saw in IMAX by the way ten yeah, years yeah. ago yeah ah, it was great yeah, yeah. by the right. way like get back to Lord okay so yeah Lord so Rings let's 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 jump yeah let's jump into the movie proper okay so it's um so we get to the intro right it's all right so basically I'm just reading it off from my notes here this is what I do I just watch a scene and then I just have to kind of write this kind of compress things down to like a, a sentence or two that that's how i prepare for these things so yeah um so of course you could button and intervene when you're ready right especially if like if a if a butcher names or whatnot you come and tell me, no this is not how you pronounce that it's this way right or whatever right so it's narrated by um galadriel herself uh kate blanchett uh, this for me was the first time i ever saw kate, uh, kate blanchett ever on screen though and still in my opinion i think she is perfectly casted in this movie here um, I, I think she just has the look down the voice you know the sort of slight theatricality and just how she moves and everything like that right um agree to disagree right so uh we open with this um to me just a solid intro to it and it's great in terms of just imagery just like yeah. if you just were to just mute everything and you're just watching scenes right it, it fits like it just tells you everything you just need to know just visually right and it works right um and just basically it's just the early history of the one ring right so in a nutshell there were you know the great rings so three were given to the elves seven to the dwarf lords and nine to the race of men right so right. unbeknownst to them now there was another ring that was me that was forged in mordor in the fires of mount doom um, this was created by the Dark Lord Sauron, who yes. forged a master ring to control all others. So, so basically, it's one ring to rule them all, right? Mm-hmm. And then we get like probably one of my favorite scenes in the movie. This is where you know you had the alliance of men and elves going up against you know the more the armies of Mordor, basically, right? And you just have this brilliant like battle sequence. Like I mean, it's short, but it gets to the point very quickly. Well, one thing I have to say though. The secret source of this whole to this movie and this whole franchise. Again, I agree to disagree though. Is Howard Shore. Right? Yeah. Right. The score yeah. for this movie is one of the best I have ever heard. I agree. Ever. Yeah. yeah. In anything, in anything. It it ropes you in. It sets the tone perfectly though. Like, especially those early parts though. It's just so dark and dreary. Though. And then when you hear the you know, the the sort of orchestra comes in. Sorry, not the orchestra. Sort of um, the operatic vocals that come in though. Every time you hear them though, like for me personally, I always get chills. Like I always get chills when I just mm-hmm. hear the vocals. Look, they sound so dark and twisted, but it just fits with you know everything that that that's going on, right? Also correct me so, if yeah. I'm wrong. Also correct me if I'm wrong. But Narisha, you read the books, right? Yeah. Uh, the the fall of Sauron goes a bit differently in the books, doesn't it? Is um. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's Ellen Deal who's supposed to kill, well, take down Sauron, and right. it's his, and he falls in battle. His sword breaks, and it was his son Isildur who takes up the sword and cuts it off. Right. Yeah. Not how it goes in the movie. No. no. Again, it's, it's okay. a quick, it's a quick cut. It's a quick cut. It's, again, it's movie shit, right? It, it, again, Peter Jackson have to speed things up and and make it flow. So it's like yeah. Yeah, because in the in the middle when they get to. I know we're going, we're going to go get to Rivendell soon, but there's this flashback where right. uh, Elrond telling Isildur to cast the ring into the fire. Right, and, right. And he's just, he's just like, no, and moves away. And he's like... Yeah, no, okay, so th- that scene, here's the thing with that scene, eh? it, it, you know, everybody's complaining about the, 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 the eagles. And I felt like, no, the eagles ex- is reasonably explained. But I always felt that scene was never properly explained. It's like, dude, like, you should yeah, so tackle I, him and make sure he yeah, knows this exactly. goddamn volcano, though. 
exactly. I was like, yeah. dude, dude, fight him and throw that ring into the fire. Yeah, What's yeah, going you know? on? <laughs> yeah, no. That, that, true, true, that's true. always bother me. People, just, people mm. just give all kind of good reasons. Because I, I always felt, I always thought a quick fix to that was just have him put on the ring and vanish. Like that was, like that would have been a simple fix. He can't see him. He escaped. Like something like that. I don't know. But I, I just will a quick fix in retrospect. But yeah, that, that used to bother the hell out of me. Because people used to have huge arguments over the goddamn eagles. I'm like, no, well, the eagles, you can see them. So you can shoot them down, right? Like, <laughs> that was kind of common sense. That was kind of common sense. That's why they didn't use the eagles. It's super easy to see them. Once you had a ring, you track them down. That's one of them nice glue flying up and take them down. Because the eagles badass, but they're not that badass. Like, yeah. they're badass. And, like, I learned, like, again, when, when I had to reread the books and I, I started reading some earlier and later, you realize it's, it have more to do with, like, higher higher levels and basically, well, the equivalent of angels or whatever it is. You and, don't get into really. Nah, yeah, you don't get into any of that. Like, like I, as yeah. a kid watching this film, I always thought Gandalf was a person, like a human. He's not. No, he's, he's, like not. Low, no, he's not. He's more like a low-level angel, right? Yeah. Or what you call it Maya, whatever it is, right? Yeah. Um, it's something like that. So I thought he could take on the Balrog, right? You know, it's, yeah. it's, it's they only, they, they only call him a wizard because that's the only thing that they could describe right. him as. Exactly. That's what they get him as, right? Exactly. Uh, yeah, but, and, and so, it's easy for you going into this world for the first time. Exactly. Oh, yeah, he's right, a exactly. wizard and he dressed yeah. and he looks like one. Okay, cool. Yeah, it's a, it's a quick shorthand because because this this franchise is effectively the 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 template for almost all fantasy, like classical yeah. fantasy, you know, European aesthetic, castles, you know, dragons, right? The old guys, white guys and beards, that shit, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah and so that, that's why they make it work in that way. Yeah, go ahead. Man. Yeah, yeah. So, um, right. So, as you say, you know I mean, is is sealed or is the one who be, pretty much uh, wipes out? Oh, sorry, takes down. I should say, uh, Soren, right? Because you know, well, his dad gets killed on foot, right? I just love that shot, basically, where he takes up the half of a sword and slices Soren's hand. Just that shot of just his yeah. his fingers just extending in the air and the ring falls on, right? Um, and you know, well, of course, well, Soren kind of disappears in this explosion of light, right? And he's presumed dead. Right, so Isildur takes the ring, and I just love how Galadriel says how he had this one chance to destroy evil forever, right? And yet he just took it for himself, right? And you know, just the 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 the, the opening sequence, just the intro, just I mean, does the stop there, man? So it has this great moment. You kind of forget that it happens too, where um Isildur's army gets attacked by orcs, right? And you think, okay, that Isildur put on the ring to avoid capture, right? But it said a minute earlier that the ring of power has a will of its own, right? So mm-hmm. basically, the ring told him to put to put them out, to put it on. You know what I mean? So you have this invisible Isildur jumping into this um, river, and in the water, you know, like he he turns visible, right? But again, just just great imagery, though. You see the ring just sinking away from him, right? Yeah. And then Galadriel says it betrayed Isildur. I love that, right? And then yeah, he collects three arrows to the back, and that that kills him, right? And it has a the, the film itself does this nice bit of foreshadowing, right? Where it says years pass, and one day somebody discovers a ring there. But you're watching the hand, and it looks like a human hand. It doesn't tell you that it's a hobbit or half, right. right? Right. But the next shot is Gollum's hand, right? And it looks um, right. more right. muddy and more just there. I, 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 I put, I, I it's, thought it's one of those things like is this like I watch like oh my god, like they do that there. Yeah, they, that's so that, they, that, they, that, they, they even tell you um. Who Gollum is anymore, buddy? And you know, it's only in the third one they'll tell you that they'll show you. Sorry, not tell you. They'll show you that Gollum was, you know, a, a hobbit. But just right. as far as imagery goes, yeah, it. I love that. Because I thought, I thought that sequence in in Return of the King was brilliant. Like it was super disturbing and dark yeah. of how they just, you know, how they just turn on each other so quick. Now, yeah. um, mm-hmm. they it. and they do an okay job at paying it off in in Hobbit in the first one, but like. Eh, Again, mm. if it was one yeah. film, it would be fine. Yeah, but whatever. It's still one of the best sequences in that film, by the way. But yeah, again, mm. you can make it work. They make it work, right. it, but yeah. Show how, how the ring corrupts you. Yeah. 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 Corrupts you to a very dark extent. Yeah. Yeah, and, it does. It does. And we'll get, we'll get to that when Frodo actually puts on the ring. So but we'll get to that. Yeah, we will. Right. And, and of course... Can't, can't forget, this is where we hear the phrase, my precious, for the first time ever. And I mean, that was that just became a part of pop culture 
since then, right? Everybody was was looking to, you know, it just became, you know, like people just love to be, to parody it. You know, mean that whole my precious thing, right? So, you know, Gollum takes it to his mountain lair and it consumed him and it gave him long life. And for 500 years, it poisoned his mind, right? Mm-hmm. And I just love how it just kind of makes this kind of open, um, open and then they're like, okay, the ring sensed this fear, this nameless fear, right? So the ring of power just abandoned him, right? And just a simple shot, just a ring just falling down this, um, this rock, basically, right? It and, abandoned Gollum. Yeah, it, it abandoned, abandoned Gollum. Gollum. <laughs> And it just so happens that, well, Bill Wobaggins himself, right? Um, a hobbit from the Shire. Um, in, in this case, who plays... Um, who plays... Ian Holm. Ian Holm, I think. Ian Holm. Oh, yes. Okay. How can I forget Ian Holm? Jeez, like, one of the greats, right? Yeah. Um, well, sorry. Rest in peace, Ian Holm, I must say, by Yeah. Uh, yeah, he plays... Um, he Well, he plays Bilbo in this one. And yeah, he, he, found, he, he finds a ring, right? And by the way, when he hears uh, Gollum screaming in the background, that's not Andy Circus. Okay. That's, oh, it's that's, um, that's Dominic uh, Monaghan, the actor who plays Mary. Yeah. Oh, serious? Yeah. Okay. That's actually him. Yeah. That's actually Dominic Monaghan. That is that is dope, though. Okay. <laughs> oh, and by the way, I forgot to mention, though, this for me was my f- my official introduction to Andy Circus and just his awesomeness, though. It's, it's really um, the two towers, though, where you really see how great he is in terms of doing motion capture acting. Because, yeah, if it's one thing, remember about the two towers. I would say, yeah, he, you know, Gollum is the standout character, right? Especially that whole duality thing, the Gollum, Gollum, and you know, when you realize, oh, he's Spiegel <laughs> as well too, and just yeah. that duality thing, just, just that was part of what made that show work. Okay? But everybody remember Gollum, like Gollum become like this pop culture icon because of of Two Towers for sure, right? But yeah, yeah I mean, Andy Circus, but like, you know, I mean, I'll, I'll, I mean, he did Venom too, but I mean, yeah. This that that special effect was pretty good. Like at the time, it was still a little, little iffy, yeah. But I remember just being quite impressed with that that CG effect of Gollum at the time, and then they just get it does get better to it over time. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Indeed. Indeed. And the circus is like the king of motion capture, man. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. Of course. Yeah. 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 All right, so the, the story itself begins in, well, the Shire, right? Well, Hobbiton, to be precise, right? Um, it's on Bilbo's birthday, his 111th birthday, actually. So, you know, the, the whole village is hosting this huge festival for him. He's indoors, right, to this um, autobiography, Day and Back Again, A Hobbit's Tale, right? Oh, and by the way, um, I'm, I'm going off of the extended cut of this, right, which runs like an extra, I believe it's like, what, 20 minutes of you know, film, but then you have like about 15 minutes of credits. Be- Sorry, 15 mm. minutes more credits because they have to acknowledge everybody who pretty much was supporting them from day one. It's, it's crazy, right? But it's kind of admirable at the same time, right? Uh, yeah. We also meet his nephew Frodo, who is played by um, Elijah Wood, though. And you know, yeah. I won't lie, though, watch this this film again. You know, you just forget that at a point in time, he was just this young, like, dope looking guy. <laughs> was it 13, yeah. 15? He was underage. Well, he wasn't that young. Um, no. his, his, his youngest performance was um, uh, the good son. That's what um, right, yeah. yeah, that, yeah, that was the first right. time you ever see him. But yeah, yeah, he was like in his, I imagine, but, like early twenties. So. Yeah. No, he didn't. He was underage. I think he, he couldn't. Um, they couldn't give him any kind of alcohol or anything. He was underage at that point in time. Oh, he was still a teenager. If I remember correctly, yeah. If I remember correctly. Okay. 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 Actually, okay. Actually, actually, timeline or not? I can't remember. Yeah. But yeah. Kind of makes sense to see in how his how he looks so, but yeah, he looked ridiculously young in this though. Right, right. Yeah. He was eighteen. Eighteen. Okay. Right, oh, right, right. Right. That, that so makes sense. Though. Remember, yeah. in the US, you have to be twenty-one to consume alcohol. Right. Okay. Yeah. Um. And then, of course, he meets Gandalf. You know, being played by the great Sir Ian McKellen. Perfect Hello. choice. Sir. I don't forget this was a year after X Men. So like, hey, yeah, he's probably I, was, I, was just about, ah. I was just about to say. I was just about to say. Gandalf was a role he nearly had to uh, forfeit. He almost had to get let go of that role because of scheduling conflicts with X Men. Right. Yeah. Okay. 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 Um. Uh. Oh no. I was. I was trying to remember when X Two came out. That was in two thousand three, right? Three. Yeah, yeah. I believe it was. Yeah. yeah. And I believe okay. his long absence in Two Towers was because of that. Right. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Right. yeah. Yeah. And, you know, right off the bat, you just know that Gandalf's going to be one of your favorite characters in this movie. I love his first side where he says, A wizard is never late, nor is he early. He rises precisely, precisely when, when he, he needs, needs to. to. Which is nice foreshadowing for two towers. Right. <laughs> Especially 
when he comes back. I love that, right? And of course, he loves that old Toby pipe weed. So yeah, you know, we fuck with that guy, right? <laughs> Upon meeting Bilbo at his home, you know, he kind of makes this observation that you know Bilbo hasn't aged a day, right? So of course, that's an end result of the Ring of Power, right? Um, mm-hmm. It's a nice little bit of character development where you see Bilbo hiding from some nosy neighbors, right? So he wants to get away from his home of Bag End and basically go see mountains again. So basically he's talking about the whole mountain area where he found the ring in the first place and, you know, heard Gollum, right? And, yeah. you know, he wants to finish his book as well, right? So and, uh, um, on, Another uh, thing, that, that's the reason why the, the ring never fully corrupted Bilbo because... The only he never wore it frequently yeah. like Gollum. Right. The, yeah. He, he, would on, it, yeah. he would only wear it because he needed to get away from his nosy relatives. Yeah, yeah. His relatives or neighbors? That's what they were. Neighbors. Yeah, well, well it, it's, it's kind of the same in this case. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. it's kind of the same. Yeah. I know it have different types of well, I don't want to say breeds, but different types of, of hobbits, though, but they're all hobbits, basically. Halflings, right? Yeah, so on the night of the celebration, you know, Bilbo has this little speech and you tell everybody, you know what I mean, farewell. And then he puts on the ring. He has his, he has it, um, he has his hands behind his back. And he puts on the ring and disappears. Everybody's like, oh, you know what I mean? So he runs back to his home. And of course, Gandalf is there waiting, right? Because, you know, he knew something was up with, with yeah. Bilbo from the jump, right? Yeah. Um, eventually, you just kind of let Bilbo go off on his journey. Because you understand, well, you know, he, he really wants to go. So, you know, Gandalf does what again his way, right? But, um, you know, he, he, there's this great moment, you almost forget that happens, right? Where he tells Gandalf that, you know, um, he's leaving everything to, to Frodo, right? Including the ring. He has an envelope somewhere. It's like, uh, no, the you, you ring is still in your pocket, right? <laughs> which, which was great. One That's second. when he was going to go out the door, right? Yeah, when he was about to, to, to go out the door, yeah. <laughs> right. Um, and this is where Bilbo says, it's mine, my own, my precious the guy was like, precious. It's been called that before, but not by but you, not right? By you. Right. Yeah. Great, great line, by the way, right? So, mm-hmm. yeah, reluctantly, I mean, Bilbo leaves the ring and leaves. Frodo comes in now. He realizes that his uncle's gone. Oh, by the way, I think in the it's in the extended version, you realize that he was adopted, apparently. Yeah, right. they have a, a moment where he says, uh, well, Bilbo adopted him for, for, for reasons. I, I can't remember exactly the full details, right? His, his parents drawn. His parents died. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, th- right, right. That, that's exactly what happened. It was never that's his nephew, but um, his parents were going to believe. In, in one of the leaks, I believe, in, in, in the Shire. Can't yeah. remember. Okay, okay, okay. Right, so um, aware, well, okay, so it's like a nice, you know, um, character moment as well, too, right? So, Fro- sorry, not Frodo. Gandalf has a ring in his hand, but, you know, Frodo noticed the ring now. So Gandalf is like, well, yeah, he, he left this ring for you. So you know, he, he puts it in an envelope now and offers it to him now. He says, well, it's his now along with everything in bargain, right? Um, Gandalf leaves now because he, he wants to find out more about this ring, especially with the whole precious thing, right? Um, meanwhile, now, Gollum is being tortured Remember off screen. Gandalf didn't hold the ring itself, eh? He didn't. He didn't. No. no. He couldn't hold the ring. Ring. Oh yes, yes, yes. yes that's right. the whole thing. Yeah. He has one. He has one of the eleven rings, huh? Yeah. He has one of the eleven. The, the, the eleven. The eleven rings. He has one of the elves. Elves. You know, he have three rings to the elves. Right. Gandalf has one. Right. right. He can't hold the, the one ring. The same way how oh. Galadriel couldn't, couldn't hold it either. Yeah. Right. How how Galadriel couldn't do it? Yes. 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 Yeah, you're, you're right, though. Again, one of those things you just see, that's really Frodo, pick up on it. When Frodo go to Hannah Mitt, say, take it, he's like, no. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a whole thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's, so that, that's a whole thing. He just told Frodo, his, fa- his uncle left something to him, and he, 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 it was on the envelope somewhere on the table or something. That's where he found it. But um, Gandalf never hold the ring. Oh, right, right, right. Okay. Well, well t- thanks for, for, um, for clearing that up for me, right? See, see, that's what we brought in. Thank you. <laughs> right. So, um, meanwhile, now Gollum is being tortured in Mordor now, and he yells, um, "Shire, Bakins!" Right. Yeah. And then, well, you see, this is the first time that you see the Nazgul, um, you know, and they they off riding off in, in horseback, right? Just that opening shot, just that establishing shot. Sorry, of the Nazgul just riding out here. Let's see, they 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 riding out of the the tower. Um, I believe it's Sauron's tower, right? And mm-hmm. just that green um aura behind them, though. I just love that. It's it's such a, a fantasy shot though, but just seeing it in live action is just 
brilliant. I, I just love that shot. There's it was, so it much good shots from, in this. Um, it was from Minas Morgul. That's where yeah. all the Nazgul are. Oh, yeah. Minas, right. See, see, that's, that's where we have you all. That's where we have you all, right? <laughs> uh, no, no, really because they do... They, 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 Right, so we see they just kind of show you it though, but later on they kind of delve into detail as to where places are, right? But yeah, that's where we first see those those characters, right? Um, so Gandalf also returns in, 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 uh-huh. in Gandalf's in Gandalf's research into the ring that's supposed to take like many many years in the book, but like oh, serious? It just, yeah, it's supposed to take yeah, like it, many it, many years. In his case, it took like half a day. <laughs> it's supposed to take long. We can't. Remember. I don't know if it was years or months, but it took it took a while. Yeah, and he would periodically come in to check on Frodo. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um. Any reason why it took it it took him so long? He had to confirm. That yeah. No. But I I just think that the way all this the film, he just find all these old scribes and stuff like that. And like I figure it's just he found the information eventually and then goes to to Frodo. Not have to go and back then to that he had period. To come with um Sauron. Saruman, sorry. Oh, Saruman, Saruman. Oh, okay. Right. Yeah, yeah. So, that again, with, 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 uh, what Ricardo's saying in terms of being able to adapt the story, tell the story through yep. film. So that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Great, great, great yeah, choice there by, um, by Mr. Mr. Peter Jackson there, right? Yeah, yeah. The, I mean, it's, the, it's debatable. I know, I know real people who will, like, fight that on and say, well, you need to be accurate to the book. It's the usual bullshit you see with comics too, right? Like, it's the same thing. Uh, but yeah, this, this was a weird choice. But I suppose the logic was, all right, well... And, and the Hobbit films kind of address some of this, like, oh, well, he was kind of doing the research all the time, kind of, so that's how he could catch up, and he just had to kind of remind himself later now. It's a, a lot of little retconning that that Jackson did, but whatever. Yeah, that's how I, I kind of see that. Like, that's how to a square, square away that idea from the books uh, with this movie now, um, and how that makes sense. That's how I think about it. Yeah, okay, that's, okay. That's, yeah. that's my solution to it. You see, you see what I think in the movie... Remember, he did the um when he put the ring into the fire to confirm what it was. Right, the, right. The, 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 um, show it. Oh, what's, what's called a tengwa. Um, the black speech of Mordor. Right, it's, uh, but the, the written speech is tengwa, I think, if I remember correctly. Okay. Um, yes. Yeah, right. well, never it's, really it's, say what what it's what it's te- the language yeah, is. No, again, again, if you, because here's the thing. One thing what what you talk about is that Lord of the Rings is really language for story after you know remember, remember that that's the whole thing with with, with um with with, with, with tolkien now remember he was a, a big philologist now so mm. he just he just used to like just make up languages a bunch of languages that are based on real world stuff and then the lord of the Rings stuff just kind of flowed from that naturally because like that's kind of the whole point now um but yeah yeah they had to get into this whole that whole language stuff is a whole big big thing um with that anyway but um go, go with the point with the fire yeah it was it's, 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 yeah, he went well, to do research. Right. In, in the book, he went to do the research first. Right. And then when he did all the research and he came back to Frodo, that is when he threw it into the fire, if I can right. remember correctly. Right. He threw right. it into the fire, and that is where they confirmed that that was right. the one room. Right. Um, as I said, as I said, I think in, in Hobbit, Hobbit kind of sc- tries to retcon a lot of the symptoms of trying to make it a little closer to the book. By saying, well, he was doing research all along because it had something weird going on. It may have involved the rings, maybe. Like, my better that whole mystery nonsense and they didn't know who Sauron was and they didn't think Sauron was coming back. And my better that whole thing with that. That was the purpose of that. It was just to retcon all of the inconsistencies. And again, most of this is like bad faith bullshit from people who nitpicky, nitpicky bullshitters that a lot of filmmakers just take to heart for some reason. Um, but yeah, that's the reason why I, I would argue that's one of the big reasons why this goddamn Hobbit trilogy was so bloated. Because he he had to cater to the book book people now. Um, that, oh, that's how it felt okay. like. That yeah, it totally was like to me. It felt like that because like it have no good reason to do all of this no, no, noise unless you have to you know square away with with the with the book people now and all these book fans who will nitpick here about whether or not Tom Bombadil should be in your in your story or not. Is that that nonsense now? But guys, pacing. <laughs> he yeah. made the right choice the first time around. It remind me of when I had an opinion on um, Harry Potter and the third movie, the movie Prisoner of Azkaban. <laughs> yeah. It, it, it's yeah. It's everybody more or less accepted the, the, the series, you know. Anybody who talk about it and they, they talked about the movie, they'll just say, read the book. You know? Yeah. It's, right? Listen. <laughs> it's some of the most toxic, it's most, some of the most toxic strains of, of book versus that nonsense now. Hey, whatever. Uh, yeah. Yeah, some tend to overdo it and some tend to, well, just read the book. Oh, gosh, the yeah, book's right yeah. there. Yeah, whatever. 
And if you yeah. don't want to read book, uh, it have audiobooks, right? So right. But, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> As a fan of audiobooks, that's why I say thank you, right? Yeah. yeah. So um, so back to Phil, right? So yeah, the 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 CD, the markings, basically in mortal language, as you'll call it right now. Uh, wandering to rule them all, wandering to find them, wandering to bring them all, and in the darkness bind them. Love that, right? Yeah. So yeah, Gandalf instructs Frodo to leave the Shire, head to the village of Bree. Um, Gandalf will wait for him at the inn of the Prancing Pony, right? Mm-hmm. Sorry, I had to try to pronounce it the way how they did it, right? <laughs> yeah. uh, I just love that right afterwards he hears somebody outside and like he just pulls uh, who would be Sam, you know, Sam. Samwise. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah Samwise Gamgee, played by Sean and Astin. What, what, one thing, one thing I love about one thing I love about the scene, you see the the the, 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 you know, the false projection, but it's false perspective. Yeah. It's, oh it's yes, yes. How, how could I like, forget? Yeah. In like terms of uh, well, what it is just just for y'all who don't know is like how the Hobbits themselves, the actors who play them, will look yeah. relatively short, yeah. and like Ian McKellen will look like they're towering over them. Yeah. Just that I, perspective and I, I, I um, was, the set design and yeah, how, how everything was, just kind of works around it to make I, these I characters look CG, you know, relatively I, I, short. I was like. Yeah, I was. Talk- I thought that was CG. Like I was like, no, this is CG, and they do it something. I was like, nope, it's all set, bro. All set. Yeah, I remember that being a yeah. huge deal. I, yeah. I should actually like rewatch the behind the scenes because they explain how they pull it yeah. off, though. Yeah, but it have far to do with the set of um yeah. of of Bag End in in yeah. that particular moment, though. That's how it's yeah. all framed, right? Can you yeah. see where he hit, where Gandalf hits his head on the um the chandelier? Yeah. I that love that was, moment. That, 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 that people that was, know. That was, yeah, that was was real. Man, you know, and they put it in. Yeah, yeah it's, 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 it no, it's, it's some good stuff. It's some really good, like a really yeah. impressive. Yeah, I, 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 I swear that was there to just let people know, hey, we in a small man room. Eh? I, right. I didn't know no, that was that was, was unintentional. An it was an accident and they kept it. They kept it, right. Yeah, it was oh, real. Okay, okay, okay. He actually bumped his head, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. I love that. I love this whole P- uh, Peter was able to capitalize on that, right? But yeah, you know, we see Paul Dot, um, Sam, and you know, I, I like that he said he wasn't eavesdropping, but you know, he was just, oh, I am been dropping was, waves, so yeah, you, yeah, he was just cutting waves. grass, <laughs> you know, he was just yeah. cutting grass on any window, and he just so happened to hear about rings and end of the wheel and all that kind of stuff, right? <laughs> I, I love that, right? So, of course, Sam tags along, and you know, um. Basically, well, Frodo is told not to put on the ring um, because Soren's agents will be drawn to its power, right? Right, so Gandalf rides off to Isengard to meet the head of his order, played by Saruman, played by the late, great, the icon himself, Christopher Lee. I don't know, for me, seeing Ian McKellen and Christopher Lee in in, in one film just blew my mind. It was just like, like I was really joking. Like, watch this now too. Like, they was just um, trying to outdo each other, trying to outbear each other, out. British each other. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Right. Each other. I swear, like if you look at them, like if you had no context, oh these characters are you swear they were brothers. You yeah, swear yeah. they were like brothers. But that's it that's it trick that's it trick to this goofy nonsense, eh? You know, how to get people to take your goofy nonsense seriously, get the top of the top line actors, right? Of yeah. course. Yeah. Is, is the reason is the main reason why why all the most of the MCU does work is the main reason why Star Trek, like holy shit, if you get bad actors for Star Trek, you just got bad Star Trek. But when uh-huh. you get somebody like Patrick Stewart. <laughs> You yeah. can take yeah. the bullshit seriously, you know. Like that's that's trick. Warp. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, engage, make it so. Engage, yeah, yeah, make yeah, it, it so. Right, you know, you can't go wrong, and uh, you know, you get a, once you have a speechifier, that's a trick. Get yeah. somebody, you know, with speechifying. He could, you could yell the top of your lungs, and you'll say all kind of uh, all kind of silly made up language stuff. Um, and it's so it is so serious and important. That's a yeah. trick. That is the trick. And they, yeah, this scene in particular is so good <laughs> when you told them. Um, absolutely love it. How they edited and cut it. The edited yeah. is excellent. <laughs> it is, it is, it is, yeah. And it's one of those things, like, I, 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 I can't remember the full details how I felt like when I saw the movie for the first time. But for me, like, you know the moment when 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 Saruman comes in, you know this guy up to up to no good. You just know right. it, right? But just how they sell it, it's like, all right, well, he's the only person who could help, um, right. who could help, uh, Gandalf, no. So you kind of get, okay, I have to meet him and we had a talk, but you know, eventually he's going to like show his true colors now. So yeah. um, Saruman shows of the Palantir, right? If I got yeah, it well, wrong. Well, I, 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 I need to add one more thing. Uh, uh, sure. Christopher, Christopher Lee, when talking about getting Christopher Lee, you know, Christopher Lee actually knew J.R.R. Tolkien. Yep. Yeah. He was a 
he actually knew him hey, and he and he the, read the, the man know Ian Fleming you know he knew yeah. him I think and he was like a re, he was like a relative like a uh, not a close relative but a relative of the, yeah, the guy who wrote the James Bond series yep. he's yeah. man real old you know yeah. <laughs> he knew J.R.R. Tolkien he read Lord of the Rings every single year and is like yep. he originally wanted to play Gandalf but he was right, too old right right and and he stabbed Nazis so that's oh. good yep yeah. yep <laughs> <laughs> that he did that he did right yeah so right um this is a scene stone um it was like deemed too dangerous to use though right and you know like the moment gandalf recovers it now you see the eye of sauron right you know one of the most iconic shots from the, the whole trilogy right so yeah you know what i mean he he know he kind of picks up on on what's going on right um and then we have one of my favorite scenes in this movie though. I'll, I'll tell you the reason why it works too um where he locks gandalf in the in the room itself right <laughs> And oh, then yeah, you have this fight. fight. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. staff off. Because this is where they just use staff to fight there. It has cracked me up because it's just these people, <laughs> man. And it might just work, eh? It's still a really good scene, though. Like, it's, yeah. it, but it's funny at the same time, eh? Yeah. But I really yeah, love, I love like, the like on paper, though. Like, on paper, it, it just looks goofy. Two old right. men, right. Like two staffs, <laughs> and it's just these force moves, you know, like, right. boom, yeah. and they'll fly, yeah. hit a wall, yeah. like, right? Yeah. It looks but, really hokey. Like, two yeah. old guys with staffs. But it, it, but it, it works. It works because you really get a sense of dread from... From the situation, it's like, oh, exactly. Gandalf, Gandalf had a girl to this dude. Like, you know, they, they, yeah. Jackson balanced it real good, right? He balanced it real good. Right, right, right. Well, but Gandalf, but he keep, but... Brave and Sauron, the whites, two different um, levels right. of right. words. Yes, yes, yes. Because uh, yes. right. remember, in the sequel, he becomes the white, right? Yeah, yeah but oh. that, that's one thing. That's one thing they never address to, um, you know, the the blue wizards and they, 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 we, we see Radagan in the in the uh, in the in Hobbit. Um, Radagast, yeah. Radagast, sir, yeah. Uh, but uh, uh, it's surprising we didn't really address all of them going forward and thing. Just a quick mention. But yeah, it, it's that whole hierarchy of wizards. Well, you're saying wizards, but not really, but yeah. Right, 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 right. But the but the whole setup basically, just talking quick, the whole setup is basically that Saruman believes that, look, like this thing needs to happen, you know what I mean? Sauron is too powerful, is either we side with him or, you know, you, 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 we get killed, right? So it's like that, right? But for me, the, the, the key for that whole sequence to work, um, of, of, of it working, though, is the set design, though. There's something so, I don't know, boy, something so gothic about that set, mm-hmm. though, especially like how the floors look kind of classy in a sense though it, it, it just has this kind of hellish you know but not too yeah. hellish that it has a sort of a really like disturbing look to it like just how everything looks and feels in that one room there. and that is why you know with, even with these two old men being thrown across <laughs> walls and being mm-hmm. spun around like like what <laughs> I don't know, it's still kind of funny when you look at it, though, when you see, um, when you see Gandalf literally spinning around on the ground. There's <laughs> something about how that floor looks, though. It, it, it just really adds a lot to it, right? It but yeah, so... Infor- it also kind of informs you that, hey, uh, Saruman ain't up to no good, bro. <laughs> Sar- Saruman is up to no good. Just look yeah, at like, it. Look, 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 look at his look at his, look at his, his crib. Look at his lair. Look at his crib. Like, yeah, yeah. Look at crib. Yeah. It looked creepy as hell, though. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, but yeah, in the process though, he takes Gandalf's staff and you know just has it spinning up in the air, right? And then you hear that Howard Shaw music, which, whew, that music, boy, I love that music, right? So meanwhile, Frodo and Sam, who's still in the Shire, they run into the old friends, uh, Mary Duck, or Mary for short, and Peregrine or Pippin, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and then we get this truly intense moment though, where you see the hobbits get off the road and they hide under the roots of this tree, right? And again, you know, forced perspective. Mm-hmm. I just love how you get that sense of skill of how short they are because when you see the Nazgul, when, when the Nazgul show up on horseback now, there's this night shot where the camera just goes under mm-hmm. and it looks like he's just towering over them mm-hmm. and they're just mm-hmm. underneath that tree. Yeah. I just love, 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 love that shot. I don't know if y'all have anything to say just about that one moment with them hiding from the um, Nazgul. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, when, it's, when, it's when the insects are to come out though. It's like, oh right. shit. Yeah. God damn. Yeah. No, yeah, yeah it's, 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 it's mood. The man, you know, again, you know to set mood in a, in a situation. Because I, I do remember the sequence. It's like, what this man, what are you doing here? Man? Yeah, hard. Yeah. yeah, 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 exactly, right? So eventually our heroes make, make their way to the end of the Prancing Pony. Uh, they, have to try, they have to try to lay low, of course, because, um, you know, anybody could be working for, for Soren, right? 
Um, <laughs> either I always forget this happened though, but yeah, Pippin and his drunk ass now start telling everybody, oh, Frodo is in the building. You know, he's, right. he's, in, my, he's in my cousin's side, blah, 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 right? Yeah. He wants a and pint. He wants a pint. Yeah, he, yeah, he wants yeah. a pint. You know, he, oh, what is that? That's a pint, right? Yeah, a pint. pint. Yeah, they have this. Yeah, they have this scene now with uh, with, with Frodo running towards Pippin, basically telling him, "Yo, like shut the hell up now." Yes. The scene of the, the the um images in my head. Well, you see that that that's that's one of the beauty of, of this movie. You remember images, you remember yes. certain shots. That that was me. That was me. I like, like rewatching this. I was like, hey, "Yes, I remember this. I remember this. I remember this." And yeah, you kind of know mentally how things are gonna play out now. So great shot now where uh where where Frodo trips right. Um, and he falls, like, you know, falls on his back now. And then the ring goes up in the air. And you just have yeah. the iconic shot of the ring going towards his hand. And then it goes into his index finger. He disappears. He runs off now. I forgot to mention, there's this one dude who's, like, sitting away from the bar. Just kind of observing everything. We learn who he is in the next scene. Because, yeah, yeah um, <laughs> see, as he goes back to normal now, he's pulled by this guy and thrown into this room, right? And then we see, yes, it is Strider. Well, we Strider, learn his right, name is... Yeah. Um, is mm-hmm. Aragon, right? Played by Viggo yeah. Mortensen, right? Viggo right. Um, this, this was the first time I ever actually ever saw him in a movie. And like, I'll never right. forget right after the trilogy ended, he was a little movie that, you know, Ricardo and I love, A History of Violence. <laughs> History of Violence. Yes. Like, yeah. 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 How do you fuck that up? <laughs> yeah. How yeah. do you fuck yeah. that up? You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I love that, right? Um, but I forget to mention too, well, you know, when, when the ring goes onto, um, onto Frodo's finger, you finally get to see what the ring bearer sees when they put on the ring, right? So it's basically right. this void, and you're seeing the Nazgul, but they all like you know, look like white yeah. ghouls now. And yeah. you learn that, yes, they are the nine kings, right? The nine human kings, right? And yeah. then you see the Eye of Sauron again. So this is the first time that mm-hmm. he sees the Eye of Sauron. He pulls off, he pulls right. off and, the and, and uh, Sauron, Sauron sees you, you know, in Soviet right. Russia, right? So, yeah. Yeah. yeah, Sauron sees you. Yeah. But, but, that, yeah. but does it take... He becomes it... invisible to everything. Yeah. And then when you put on the ring, you come visible to him. Yeah, 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 yeah. But but that's the thing. When um when I saw the Nazgul for the first time, I honestly thought that there were people underneath those cloaks. I was like, I, I think we all did. But, yeah. but when I but when I when you do your research, it's like no, no. When you pull off the cloaks, it Nothing. is invisible. Nothing yeah. underneath. It's like oh shit, mm-hmm. oh shit. That's scary. That's actually yeah, it is scary. Uh... Yeah, because when you put on your ring, it's like it takes you to where they actually are. It's like mm-hmm. you go in some kind of realm, and you see what the ring rates actually are, and you see you get to see all what who people get corrupted by the ring actually are, and it's like it's it's real. It's a whole thing with the ring. It's a whole mythology with the ring. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah. It is. yeah. Um, so Aragorn tells him, well, you know, he knows of Gandalf, but he warned the hobbits that they're coming, right? And so said, so done, because yeah, the, the Nazgul literally bust through the gate. I feel mm-hmm. so sorry for the, for the gatekeeper, boy, because he got yeah, smushed. Yeah. Jesus, right? Um, the music for this, though, my God, it is so nightmarish what they say to her. just so goddamn brilliant in my opinion though i just love how the nazgul move like you see a shot like an overhead shot the door open and it looks like they're just sliding through and they just have the, the, the swords like to the sides though i just love that it have a it have a kind of weird samurai kind of looked it the way how they just kind of sl- they just kind of slide through the the, the entrance though. i just find it's really badass right uh they actually what well, the hobbits themselves pull up a nice little trick where you know you take it oh they they sleep and you know the nazgul show up and they start to stab up the um the the, the beds themselves yeah, like, yeah oh wait there's, there's pillows and they start to scream great, like ah. great editing though great yes, editing. it is because it keeps <laughs> cutting back to um to sam who's sleeping right if you watch close it's like well it doesn't look like he he's um like he has the the his blanket covering him now but the way how it's shut and lit you think oh that's what's really going on now because i was kind of watching you see like oh like how come you school didn't pick up on the fact that they, they 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 had their heads covered. They just started stabbing just because, right? It's all those nitpicky things, but still, it's it's all about for, um, it's all about setting the audience up, right? But yeah, um, Aragon and the, the hobbits actually were in another building. Ha, huh, that's really funny. So Aragon the offers to take the hobbits to Rivendell, right, to the house of Elrond, right, aka Elf Country, as I'm gonna call it here, right? So meanwhile, poor Gandalf is kept as a prisoner of Saruman, the roof of his tower in Isengard. 
Um, Saruman below is ordering his orcs to, to just start derooting all the trees in the area. So again, yeah. foreshadowing of what we'll see with the two towers. I'll never forget with the two towers, right? Just talking quickly. Um, those moments with the talking trees. I forgot what the names are right now. Ents. The ants. 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 Yeah. Ants. Yeah. ants, right, right. I remember, like, every time they were cut back, especially, like, in the second act, though, people were just like, oh, gosh, boy, we're back to them talking trees again, boy. <laughs> it's just them I talking actually, about, I, actually, Ooh, I, I remember the like time the way back when, yeah. blah, blah, blah. But the it moment... Have, it have, it have one, one that people absolutely love in the in 2000s when, he, when, he, when the one tree was on fire. And he yes, out yes. Yeah. <laughs> he yeah. Yeah. Himself. yeah. No, but it's, it's the build-up to the moment where they reach that to the, um, to, um, to Isengard, though. And you see all the dead trees, and they, they just flip out. That that's a love, right? But yeah. leading up to it, I remember some people just like, "Oh gosh, by them trees and the boring and the talking." <laughs> I, I don't like, understand why people don't like the ants, though. I actually like them. I actually do. I like them too. <laughs> uh, Risha, you, you have anything to say about the, about the ants, or you couldn't care? Oh, I didn't get to me. They were badass. <laughs> <laughs> I, no, the, were, the, the, the laughing part, part about it is, is when they're trying to talk. Oh. They, take, they take almost like days, hours just to make one word. Yes. <laughs> we never say anything unless it is worth taking a long time a, to say. Time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That was a great line, yeah. Yeah, it took a while in the book. It took a while for um for Treebeard to introduce who Mary and Pippin were. And even just to say a simple hi. Mm. I like. Oh my gosh! Yeah, yeah. Like this, this, this part of the chapter going to be long because that's the first time I got, I reached there. I was like, please, please, don't let it be long. But it, it wasn't that long. It just he was just explaining how they they tend to take long to talk. Mm-hmm. Okay. You okay, know. Okay. But I mean, when the end went to war, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That, 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 that was badass. I do remember the audience like cheering at that point where they where they was picking up like you know large stones and throwing it at the Urukai and you know characters like that. And of course, that one who gets tortured, he outs himself in the water. That, that was dope, right? So yeah, um, our heroes basically shack up at this old watchtower um, in the night. You know, basically through the wakes up, and you see the other three hobbits making dinner because what did they set up is that hobbits eat a lot. So you know, it's yeah. just like yeah, we had to eat, right? Of course, he now school notice. Yeah, we claim. missed we missed, the, um, we missed the second breakfast joke. That was reference in this. Yeah. That was in this movie. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, it was. Yes, it was. Yeah, that that, that become a really popular. Popular. Yeah, yeah, like does he know about second breakfast? So to it of what? They were actually coming first. Yeah, because when um when Aragorn and the Hobbits were left leave um the inner the prancing pony, they they were on their way to 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 go to um to Rivendell and. Um, per- Mary, I think it was Mary, or Sam. They were organizing. Mary, yeah. It was Pippin. Yeah, Pippin. they were make organizing to make breakfast. All three of them, and it's like, um, Aragorn is like, why are we stopping? You know, you know, so, you know. So he's yeah. like, what about? Does he know of second breakfast? I already have it. Yeah. What about second breakfast? Yeah. And then they had to say, I don't think he knows anything about second breakfast. Pip. What? What about elevensies? Yeah, elevensies. Yeah. yeah. Um, so no, I, I, lunch I think- Sorry, I, I think that is a that is in the extended version. If, I, if I'm not mistaken, right. no, it's oh, no, it's, it's an extended version. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a normal version. Okay. okay. All right. All right. Yeah. So, um, we have okay. So again, I'll film it. You know, we have a true and a blood inspired shot where you see Nazgul like sliding in through the mist, and you know, it's just like you see this mist through the, the trees and whatnot. This overhead shot, though, and you know, it looks awesome. But basically, yes, the, the hobbits find themselves cornered by the Nazgul. Uh, you know, Frodo puts on the ring and, you know, he sees the Nazgul as these, again, these white ghosts, right? These phantasms, right? Um, as he's about to pull the ring off, now he gets stabbed in the shoulder by one of the Nazgul. And just then, Aragorn just shows up like a badass and just starts chasing off the Nazgul. There's a great shot where he throws his torch at one of them and it, it, it hits him literally through the face and then he falls off. That, that was really cool, though. Yeah, but yeah, you, can we really learned... see, you can really see Peter Jackson like coming into, coming from like low budget filmmaking into horror, into, yeah. into horror yeah. because it's like, when you see that Nazgul running away with the torch hanging from his face, it's like this looking like super low budget kind of. Yeah, yeah. it looks really it, low budget. Yeah, it has a kind of evil that is kind of vibe too. The way it's like 
you know, anything goes. If we get a, if we had to kill it this way, we had to kill it that way. You know what I mean? Uh, but yeah, basically, Frodo gets stabbed with a morgul, with a morgul blade now, and yep. he needs elvish medicine to save him, right? Also, I forgot to mention too, there was this montage at Saruman's place now, where we see, you know, the Uruk Hai being created for the first time. It <laughs> looks disgusting and it looks awesome yeah. at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it does. Yeah, again, again, a lot of great like practical effects stuff that you think. Um, was is it is the line man man with his man flesh for dinner or what it was, was the line man flesh? Right, yeah, that was in this movie. Yeah, yeah, it that was, was in this movie. Right. Yeah, yeah. But you meant if it was in the book. Yeah, no, no, in the movie. I just, I just trying to remember when. Oh, he, yeah. When yeah. It is. I didn't give it a rewatch. I haven't seen it in ages. And I just started going off memory. Um, but yeah, I know. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> right. So, so, his man flesh or something like that. Yeah. Something like something in man flashes on the menu again, boys, or something like that. No, that wasn't too tall. Uh, no, no, that wasn't too tall. That wasn't too tall. That's the that's the that's the that's the um that's the goblins. I think it's either the goblins or the orcs say that. Right. No, the oh. goblins. The goblins. No, no, it's the urukai. It was the it was one of the urukai, and they were like deciding on whether to eat Mary and Pippin. Ah, yes, right, yes, right, right, yes. Right. That was in the, the that was in the beginning of of two towers. I remember now. Yeah, yeah. that was in two towers. Yeah. Right. Um, so, right, so while Frodo is on the ground now losing his breath because he's like, you know, he, you know, he's, he's wheezing now, right? Um, Arwen, who is played by Liv Tyler, who yeah. I guess Peter Jackson noticed after her performance in Armageddon, just saying, <laughs> you know. Well, yeah, that's who the, that's who the rule I can think of. <laughs> yeah, like, she was, in, she was in Armageddon, right? So, yeah, yeah right? And I just love how these... Well, I should say the female elf characters usually show up and there's like light that emanates from them. No, like I know it's it's visual effects or whatnot, but it just looks like light is just so glowing off of her. You know what I mean? He was seeing Frodo was seeing his, her immortality. That's what the light represents. Yeah, I thought I thought it was just like ooh, I'm an elf. Ooh, like. no, he, was, he was seeing her immortality. And I think the elves you would notice she had. You will notice in, when she saw her, she was and she was in the white glow, right? Mm. She had on a, a white dress. And when mm-hmm. she she's thinking about Frodo, normally, normal, she's wearing a purple cloak. So she he's seeing her and who she really is. Oh, that's what that was. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's what that was. Julio. I, I just thought that I just thought I, that I um, didn't know that. I just thought that the elves were supposed to be like really beautiful. So it's like, okay. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Rubber yeah. visuals there. So, you know. And I won't lie. I mean, like, you know, casting again. Like, like Liv Tyler, no lie. She have a look. She have a look about her. Just that face. And they see we how she's lit though. Like, she look gorgeous. I won't lie. You know what I mean? But yeah. No wonder Aragon loves her, right? I mean. I mean that was like, a good entrance. An introduction was, to her. Yeah. yeah. So, so incredibly epic, right? Um, so yeah, Arwen decides to to take her to take him, sorry, to his father, to her father, sorry, uh, you know, because she's the faster rider compared to Aragon. She would be lighter. Right. Okay. Mm. okay. I, also, yeah. also, uh, um, did, did anybody notice this? Like in when they were showing it on TV, like whenever they would speak Elvish, like the lighting would change. Yeah. Is that just is that just me, or did that happen with anybody else? I I know. Yeah, I didn't notice. I never paid attention to that. I I, 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 noticed I, that. I noticed it on stars and I was like, why does the lighting change whenever they speak in Elvish? It, as a, as a, it was a thing with me, but whatever, let's keep going. Yeah, let's, right? Um, I don't know, maybe I should kind of watch it over and, and see for myself, right? Yeah, so, uh, right, so we have this great kick ass chase scene basically with uh with Arwen on horseback and seeing Nazgo chase that for her. Uh again, how it show music for this absolutely fantastic though. Yeah. I just get your heart racing with every second this sequence plays out, right? Yeah, and then you get one, sequence, yeah. yeah, then you get one of the movie's best lines when she pulls out her sword and she says, If you want him, come and claim him, right? Mm-hmm. Love that, right? I mean it's it's just awesome, right? And then she uses her elven magic to chase off the Nazgu by channeling this wave of like river water them, right? <laughs> by the way, the effects in this movie still holds yeah, up to still especially solid, that yeah. like it's yeah. it's fancy stuff, especially when you see the the wave look like you know horses charging, yeah, but yeah. it looks so gr- it, it looks it looks brilliant actually. Like yeah. I have no complaints about the visual effects in this show, right? Mm-hmm. I would say just just in general, I mean there's a few moments where you could tell like it's a it's one yeah. of those things where like, you could tell, yes, it's a visual effect and whatnot, right? right? But 
It's like, of course, yeah. it's a visual effect. Duh, like, it's not real, duh. It's, but it, it, it looks so yeah. convincing. In the entire franchise, I have, like, little to no problems with. There's only one moment, one moment in the entire trilogy that is ridiculous, but it works, and it's kind of cool. And, and I, I remember giving it a rewatch, and, and, I, and I think you know the moment in the two towers. There's a moment. It was it went to Amle Golas. It went to Golas. Yes, right, they tried to bring yeah. down this big beast thing. I know you're talking no, about that's yeah. not the moment. It's in the two no? towers. In the two towers, there's one very silly moment that everybody had everybody crack it up. That looked like bad CG. That was about it. <laughs> Everything else is fine for the most part. Which part? Well, Which part in the two towers? Tell us this part. Which one? The part, it, the part in the two towers where he mugs the horse. <laughs> that part. Oh, that oh, part. Oh, yeah. Oh, that part. <laughs> that part is so stupid. <laughs> uh-huh. And it's one of those... He went look- forward and then came back. Yeah. It's one yeah, of those he went forward and then came back. Right, right. He <laughs> flicks on the other side. It's like, really? It's like, but it, but I remember everybody in the audience cracking up. But yeah, especially in fact, as I mentioned, it's pretty good um, on average. Um, it, it, a lot of it works because they, they made a lot of smart decisions. Again, they didn't overdo it. They just say, okay, for the service so, so well, of the plot. Let's say, let's say his, his defeat of the oily funds compensated for that move, right? In, um, right, right. Mm-hmm. But that's still, that still, that still was like, again, product of its time stuff, right? Yeah, still, when you watch it back, you're like, all right, you can see the mistakes, but you know, back then still work. But yeah, it's a, it's a, even, even as I say, the, the special effects holds up for the most part and it depends on how you, how you treat special effects and how, how charitable, you, charitable you should be towards that, you know, given that is what, that 20 year old film, right? Um, exactly, you know, yeah. We, we, are, we, are, we are all accustomed to, you know, super high rendered stuff, even though there's still be effing up special effects nowadays for some reason. Anyway, mm-hmm. that's more to do with the industry and, and people not being paid. Um, uh-huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. So yeah, it's, anyway. <laughs> So we go, I'm afraid we, yeah. for Spider-Man No Way Home. I'm, you know? I'm not going to lie. Yeah, but which, we'll move which, on. At the time of first recording, we'll be out in a few days. Boy, yeah, anyway. can't wait, right? Yeah, anyway, anyway, right? So right. Um, Frodo wakes up in the house of El Rondo. Of course, Gandalf is there. Uh, we see via flashback what happened. Uh, basically, he escaped through one of those um, eagle... You know, yeah. eagle boots thing that um, yeah. I believe shows up after in Return of the King, right? And yeah, you know, yeah. all those things, like for me, I actually forgot. Oh, yeah, that's how you escape, right? Uh, right, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. Um, I remember how big a deal it was back then seeing Hugo Weaving, who plays um, yeah, Elrond Agent in Smith. the movie. It, it yeah, was Agent like, Smith yeah, two years yeah. ago, he was Agent Smith, right? Right, yeah. <laughs> and funny thing, though, like two years later, um, can we, you know, we talked about this uh, with the Matrix sequels. Yeah, this was, you know, the, the Matrix uh, franchise trying to capitalize on the success of the Lord of the Rings movies by saying, here's what, oh, they yeah, have Return of the King in 2003, here's what we're going to do. We're going to make our own trilogy, right? We're going to have right. two sequels come the same year, mm-hmm. ha, ha, ha. And yet, Return of the King come, destroy yeah. everything, yeah. win tons of awards, and the rest is history, right? Ha, yeah, ha. It, 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 it was a bad, it was a kind of a weak period for sci-fi too, because I think it's the next year had one of the, well uh, my, one of my least favorite movies ever Star Trek Nemesis and yeah both oh, Harry yeah. Potter both Harry Potter and that ate that movie for lunch right? like holy shit <laughs> yeah fantasy was having a good hey, time was, I think I think Star Trek Nemesis is one of my husband's favorite song movies oh, ter- terrible movie <laughs> sorry to <laughs> see you sure but he's a tricky how you could love that movie yeah terrible <laughs> movie. He, he's, a, he's a tricky sex yeah, a sex sexual assault enough Troy come on <laughs> moving on <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, yeah. So right. yeah, um, go ahead, Matthew. Sorry. Right, right, right. So um, they have there's this great conversation between Gandalf and Elrond. So Elrond talking about well, you know, the ring can't stay in Rivendell because the elves won't stand a chance against both Sauron and Saruman's forces, right? And then Sean Bean, aka Eddard Stark from Game of yeah. Thrones, shows mm-hmm. up, right? AKA yeah. Boromir, right? I love how he just shows up, like you know, just like a badass. Yeah. And then right yeah. after that, the Gulas. Another badass, you know, pre Hawkeye, yeah. Hawkeye shoes up, right? And right. then give these shoes up, who, in my opinion, is one of my, I would say, out of the three, he is one of my favorite characters, right? I just, I just love his demeanor, just like, and my action. You know I mean, yes. just so, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, just short yeah, and rotund, you know what I mean? But it works. Yeah. It totally works, right? You know, he's actually 4 1 out of all of them, really. He has 6 1. You know? That is what cracking me over this is the casting in this, though, sometimes, though. It's like, you see us? <laughs> yes. I'm like, when yeah. I hear that, I'm like, he was oh. um oh gosh, where he was? What show he was in before? He was in Sliders, right? I want to say that. I, I, the actor was the actor's name again. Um, John Rhys Davis. Um, yeah, yeah, I remember yeah, him Sliders, from the Sliders, first. Yeah. I remember from the first Indiana Jones movie. I'm um, reading. He lost. Saki was there. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. 
Right. Yeah, um, and they do like a nice little bit of sh- foreshadowing for Return of the King, right? Because they say that there'll be one man who could reclaim the throne of Gondor. We learn about Gondor, right? Being one of the, I believe, is the last remaining human city, basically, right? Um, I could be wrong. If if I'm wrong, forgive me, right? Um, and of course, well, we we will learn because literally the the scene cuts to him. It's Aragorn, right? Aragorn is gonna be that person, right? But we learn that he kind of turned his back on that ideal, and now he's an exile, right? Um. Yeah. And then we have a really memorable moment. I know, I know, Narisha is one of your favorite scenes. Uh, this is the convo between Aragon and Arwen, right? Um, beautiful, in my opinion. Very nicely lit. I mean, it is a romantic scene, and it, it looks gorgeous, in my opinion, right? Um, and this is really where the movie establishes their relationship, right? Um, and one thing I, I always kind of forget, though, is that you know she she said that she'll give up her Arwen herself will give up her immortality to be with him for one lifetime. It's like, oh, okay. <laughs> uh, this is symbolized by her offering the Evan Star pendant, right? Uh, I don't know you do you do a thing or two about that that pendant. So I'll uh, take it away. <laughs> is this one of your favorite scenes in the movie or not? Well, yeah, of course, it's one of my favorite scenes, right? Um, I mean, I'm 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 a hopeless romantic right already. So, in in the the her immortality in is in her her necklace if I can say that, right? Because the light of the evening. So eventually, as the the movie progress, it's it begins to wane, and her 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 life form depends on what is really going on in terms of the destruction of the ring, you know. So yeah, she 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 made her he she made a choice to 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 stay with Aragorn through everything. Even though the mm. father didn't want it. Yes, yeah, yeah, yes, yes, yes. What, what's crack me up? What, what, what does crack me up is how the father is just constantly negging Aragon. He's like, yeah, you know, your great, 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 great grand 20 generations remove whoever. <laughs> you know, it's a piece of trash now and use a piece of trash too. Yeah, you'll never live up. Like, I just love that the, the, that, 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 that acting. It's just cracking me up. Right. Mm. But he was trying to, one minute, he didn't want him to take the churn, right? right? But he also didn't want him with his daughter. You're right. 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 He was a man. Like, right. But he, he didn't. He she she made up her mind. No amount of of convic- convincing could have changed that. Even though he tried in two hours. Right. Mm. Because when he asked her if she, if she also loved him, she's like yes. And you know that is why she decided to go to the to the um to the, the sea. Hands, the undying yeah, the undying hands. Hands. Right, it was because of him, but when he realized that her her um immortality was going and she is slowly dying, he he had to give her what she wanted. She she made her choice. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly, you know? exactly. Yeah, like she's what she, she said. Whether by your will or not, there is no ship now that can bear me hence. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that that's some great characterization there, right? Uh, so the next scene now, um, Elrond holds this um, secret council. So the hobbits are there, Gandalf, um, Boromir, Ar- Ar- Aragorn, Legolas, and Gimli are there, right? Um, there's, a scene, and there's, a, there's, a, there's a scene in the extended cut uh, that I wish was in the, was in the theatrical cut. It was when um, Bo- when uh, Elrond is like, bring forth the ring, Frodo, and he puts it on the he puts it on the table. And then Boromir stands up. He's like, "Is sealed as bane." And before yes. he could, and, and before he could touch it, Gandalf stands up and he's he's just started to speak the black speech of Mordor, and the whole place just started to get dark. Like, yeah, oh, yeah. That, that, like, oh, that, that wasn't the theatrical cut. I no, it was no. Closer. That was the theatrical. Wow, okay. it was in the okay, extended okay. cut. I was like, right. I, I wish this movie, I wish it would have been in the theatrical cut, but I understand why they cut it. I understand? Yeah. Because in because in the next scene, he, uh, Boromir is like. It's a gift, but it's yeah. a gift, and he's and but he's like, did you just see what just happened? Right. Yes. Yeah. It, it was right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So um, there's a nice little bit of musical foreshadowing. I know I keep using this word a lot, but this is what this movie nails, right? Foreshadowing of things to come, right? Where um, while Boromir is doing his speech, you hear a little bit of the team from Return of the King, like a soft version of it. That dun, 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 dun. right, you just hear him doing that. Uh, I thought that was like real brilliant, though. Just again, you know what I mean? Because they made these films, you know, one after the next. You know what I mean? It's like they they kind of taught these things after the fact, right? Um, and yeah, basically they find out they well they. You know, it's revealed that there's only one way to destroy the ring. You have to go back to where it's made and cast it into Mount Doom, right? And only one person could do this, right? And then we get the line that pretty much sparked a meme. 
One does not simply walk into Mordor. Into Mordor. Yeah, and, that's what I mean. Yeah. And you know, it's just it's just Boromir talking. He just has his hand like almost like he's holding the ring by himself, though. Yeah. And yeah, like it's one of those things like, you know, like when you see the meme, like for me, like when I saw the meme of <laughs> Of Sean Bean's character doing that is like, wait, what was what, what was the context of it? The can they just add all these different words? But then, like me watching it was like, oh, okay, that's that's where it all started. But it's funny how that shot uh, became a meme. Uh, that 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 just blows my mind in my opinion, right? Of course, there's a there are, a quarrel takes place. Everybody's um you know arguing as to what to do about the ring, and there's a nice shot though where Frodo just looks at the reflection of the the ring. Well, well the everybody, well sorry, not everybody, but those who are reflected on that side of the ring itself, and then you just see like this flame, like flames just consume them in that right. in that ring itself. Just just brilliant imagery right there, right? And yeah, Frodo decides that he's going to take the ring to Mordor, right? But he does know the way the way. Mm-hmm. Uh, so everybody comes in. I just love when Gimli says, you know, well, sorry, well, Legolas say you have my bow, but I just love when Gimli says, and my axe. Yeah, <laughs> another, another meme. Yeah, yeah, another, another meme. classic <laughs> meme. Yeah, that, that is in the comment yeah. section of every, any, any video for like hot for a hot minute. That was a meme. Yeah, yeah, you know, mm-hmm. Anybody remember when Orlando Bloom was a thing for a hot minute? Yeah. yeah. Oh, then, speaking of that, speaking know, of that, right? So. You know, yeah, to do stuff without good Lord of the Rings. Good, so. good thing you bring up Orlando Bloom, right? So I'll never forget, right? A little quick story. Right after Return of the King came out, right? 2004. Troy hit. I'll never yeah, forget. Right. People was ripping that movie to shreds to say, boy, we just had the Lord of the Rings trilogy. What kind of Greek shit is this you showing us? Blow, this movie is trash. I remember watching that movie, was like, which which featured Orlando Bloom, right, by the way. Mm-hmm. I watched it, I was like, no, this movie were all good. Like, why people hate on this thread? But I, I could be wrong. I think the reason is because it came right after, right on the heels of Return of the King now, because that was uh, just yeah. like big budget, uh, you know, again, um, yeah. warfare film. Now, like, you know, yeah. and then they dropped Troy, and it's like, wait, what's this? Like, it, it looked, it looked like a, like they were no. trying to capitalize it. I like, no, like, no, Troy no, is his no, own no, thing, though. No, well, Troy, Troy is his own thing, but again, budget, budget, little simple things like budget stuff and the look. Like, okay, remember I had this one shot in Troy where you see a bunch of ships with this yeah, white shot? Yeah, I'll admit, like, yeah, that, that did really all that. Yeah, that's like, all it is, all it is, all it is, copy and paste that shot, though. Like, holy that, shit. That, that's what it is. <laughs> and looking so bad, though. And, and yeah. even then it looked bad. So it's like, mm. yeah, you, you, you know, it's a quality of filmmaking that is going to think. Again, it's just it's the toolbox now. You don't know how to use the toolbox. But Troy, right? He was really cast because he was a pretty boy. Yeah, right, exactly. Paris. Yeah, yeah. Paris, Paris is the one who fell in love with Helen. Mm-hmm. And Helen right. bring, Helen bring doom to Troy. Right. Yeah. That's the whole point, you know. Yeah, like, yeah. It was like a weird, <laughs> I was, a, a lot of... Um, yeah, a love of spat in a way. He stole right. somebody, woman, and yeah, war started because of that. Yeah, you know. Exactly. <laughs> you're, you're, you're pissed off Brad Pitt. Hey, right? yeah, everybody <laughs> in Asian Greece is down bad, right? So, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. But back then, though, in the 2000s, um, Orlando Blue was a thing. I remember he showed up in a couple of romantic comedies, but I just yeah. never right. cared to see them, you know, whoever. The, um, 2003, the 2003 was the year for Orlando boy with Pirates of the Caribbean and then Return right. the Yes, right. yes. I forgot yeah. about that. How could I mm-hmm. forget? Yeah, he was in Pirates too, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and then, you know, like, r- I just always love how the scene ends uh, where the music swells, you hear the team song, you know, the da 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 but you hear uh, a less triumphant version of it, though. And, you know, it's a rod C, just paraphrasing here, you will now be known as the Fellowship of the Ring, right? And then Pippin just dropped that final line, though. So where are we where going? Are we going? Where are we mm-hmm. going? I love that. <laughs> and that literally is the end of part one. If you watch the extended version, it cuts there for like a few seconds and it starts back. I remember seeing it in theaters. That was when the intermission started. It's like, yes, like it's just a perfect way to just stop the film and just let people know, okay, battery break, go do what you had to do right. and then come back, right? So I love yeah, gone, that. Gone, gone, by, gone by a nuggle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> throwback, though. Throwback, right? Yeah. I mean, the Magnificent Seven, rest in peace, right? You know? Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> So we so right so part two right so Bilbo gives Frodo his uh his old sword which he calls Sting right and yes. the blade glues when orcs are close right I believe right. Th- this this was in the Hobbit obviously right uh, mm-hmm. all that I can't yeah. remember much about it. yeah yeah it, w- it right. was right. right so these these little sequences is is arguably some of the most frightened parts of the movie by far like 
They had, they had to go that hard with with your home though, like that that makeup though, like oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes, yes, God, yes. Yes. no. Let, 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 let me tell you why why this works, right? Because yeah. all right, so so initially it would have just been easy to just show a reaction, shut off Frodo, right, and then right. back to to Bilbo, right? Because what happens basically is that right after he gives him the sword, he gives him this um this shoot, right, which we learn is made of the out of mitril, right? right. Uh, so basically, yeah. it's like you know, chain meal now, basically, right? So he, right. he, he tells Frodo, all right, take off your shirt and put it on, right? Then he notices the ring there. It's like, oh, you had a ring on you, blah, 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 right? <laughs> and then you literally see, like, like Bilbo's face watched it. And yeah. then it just, like, turns monstrous for, like, about three seconds. Yeah, this, this, and this, this cuts this, back there. And it's like, brutal jump scare dread. <laughs> like, <wait>. what? <laughs> yeah, it, 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 it's very, very effective. Though, because it happens yeah. in, in the frame there, you know? Yeah, no, it, it nice, cuts back exactly. to his face yeah, looking yeah. bad there. Let me catch you, yeah. yeah. Cause then, as I say, as I say, you you you, you don't have to go that hard, but it did. Uh, like you, but I don't know what what what, who, what. Listen, as I say, you know, good filmmaking, right? Whoever do that, like makeup slash, you know, special effect or whatever. I don't know how it was done, like production wise. But it was so, I, I think it's VFX. I think it's VFX. Yeah, but it was yeah. so damn effective, dread. Like how they it do that? Was, this, they that they cut on this. Like, jeez, boy, what the hell is that? Dread? <laughs> but, yeah, and yeah. And is the eye? Is the eye? Exactly. Is the teeth, boy? So yeah. The, Jeez, yeah. you know like, what the hell, Dread? But I'm real Dread, though. It was, it was, right? So, um, <laughs> well, anyway, yeah, 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 go ahead, Patricia. Sure. What happened to, to, to Smeagol? Right, and exactly. To yes. Right, 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 yeah. It does, it does. I, I, I just love how that scene ends where, yeah, Bilbo apologizes, like, yo, uh, sorry, I, I just, you know, the, the ring overwhelmed me, right? So, anyway, so the fellowship. Finally, it's Rivendell, though, and, you know, it, it, it leads to one of my favorite montages of this whole franchise, in my opinion, though. And this is where you just hear the sweeping music. And you just, it's just all these great shots. If, if there's one thing this this trilogy needs is locations, just perfect locations. It's to the point that you would see characters in the shot, though, and ask yourself, is this, are, they in front of, are they in front of a green screen? Or is this literally how this place in New Zealand looks like? You realize, no, this is actually... Like in New Zealand, they actually film this at these spots, especially with the uh, mountainous scenes which you get to later, on, right? But mm-hmm. it's when that music swells, you just hear the theme song that band, turn, 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 and the camera's just uh, the, the the hero just walking past the camera, just like badass. Just, I love that, right? And so it's one of those things that you, you kind of forget where you do. Like watch it again, uh, you, you realize how they section off everyone. So Gandalf is first, then Legolas, Gimli, the hobbits. Then Boromir and then Aragon, who will become yeah. the king, right? Brilliant, I love that. I don't know if y'all are eating the way on just that montage of our heroes just walking in, da, 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 you know, the FA. Do you have to say about that? No, I mean, not, no, no complaints, just solid filmmaking, good blocking. It's, it's our word for that. Yes, it's called blocking, blocking and staging blocking. and staging, mm. just framing up characters, putting them in a form. You, you, so, you, it's just simple visual storytelling. So, it's simple, can't go wrong with that. Yes, I had to think it out. It does, yeah, 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 and, and just hearing this triumphant music after all this dark stuff in the first half of the movie, it it, it works to it. It it kind of gives the audience a sense of yeah, the the, the adventure is gonna begin though. I remember Peter Jackson trying to do the same thing in the Hobbit, where it was just all this wait and wait and wait and wait, and it's like okay, yes, now now everybody's going off on the adventure. And then the music for that movie starts. It's like yeah, we 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 off to it, but it's like almost halfway to the movie. It's like oh, okay, what's going on, right? But anyway, it didn't feel the same. It yeah, it, it just didn't feel the same though. Although I, I do like the theme for the first Hobbit movie, and there's something about it that that worked with me, right? Anyway, so um, the Fellowship makes its way now to the Misty Mountains, right? Uh, there's a great moment where um, Frodo slips and falls on the snow and, like, while he was walking through, right? And he's looking for the ring and, you know, again, just perfect imagery. The... It, wasn't, it wasn't the um, Misty Mountains. It was um, Caradras. Okay, this was leading up to the Misty Mountains and they weren't there as yet. No, I don't think so. Okay, uh-huh. so where they were there. Uh, I, I, I swear that whole area was the Misty Mountains. No, that was the um, Caradras. No, no, I think it was the Misty Mountains. We must hold this course west of the Misty Mountains for four days. Yes, right, yeah. right, right. And then, and then but, you will go to they, that other spot. They had, to cha- they had to change course because of the, the Crabine. Right. The right. Crabine from Dunlun. Right. right. Yeah, I'll I'll get into the whole change of course a little bit, right? So um yeah, it's just seeing that ring on the extreme right of the of the of the um the screen, it's in focus, 
Yeah. And he just seeing Frodo just far away from it, and then somebody picks it up by the chain, and it's Boromir, right? Yeah, Who you know, yeah. he's just obsessed over Isildur's bead, right? Um, away of the part that Gandalf is taking Saruman, you know, sabotages them. Yeah, like, he just does a spell, and you know, it's just like all these harsh winds and snowfall. Again, going back to Christopher Lee, just this his performance too. You know what I mean? It just, I'll just love this shot, love this shot so much, where he is just on top of the tower, of his tower, sorry, of yeah, of his tower, and he's just doing this grand spell, right? Yeah. And, you know, it's just looking up at the skies, it's all like, you know, stormy and all that kind of stuff, but, you know, it's, this, <laughs> yeah, again, this again, chance, what's that? Looks so brilliant. Though. I love okay, that. So, scene. like, everyone knows that he's like a big black metal guy, right? Like, you have a band, you had a band, so oh, right, like, right. all of that fall in line with him and make perfect sense <laughs> with in terms of the aesthetic. I just do it that so he could have been doing that and had nothing to do with Lord of the Rings, like, <laughs> yeah. so, you know, it, it's fine. Like, none of that was none of that was weird, yeah. <laughs> um, but one thing, one thing this this particular this film kneels brilliantly, in my opinion, though, is the danger involved in this entire mission, boy. Because, yeah, just for the moment, you know, um, Frodo and them leave the Shire, though, it's just danger. It's just anything could happen. They could lose their lives. That you know, it it's just it, you know, be like when you go into like general like adventure stories, it's like oh yeah, they're gonna get out of this somehow, and they're gonna. You know, good will triumph over evil. You know what I mean? You don't have to worry too much about stakes. But this one, you really felt the stakes. So you felt like at any point in time those characters could die. In particular, that that scene with, you know, that you know, the, the winds and you know, just all that harshness that they're going through just to get through those mountains. So, you know, they have to make the decision. It's something that Gimli brought up earlier on. They'll go through the minds of Mor of, of Moira, right? Moria. Um, yeah. Where yeah. his Moria, his, yeah. Yeah, Moria, right? Where his, oh, yeah. uh, where his uh, cousin is, is waiting for him, right? Okay, so if I remember correctly, this was the first, like, this part of uh, Tolkien's, like, building, world building language. That was, like, the first concept that he come up with, that Moria thing. Like, that was the first time he connect. This was the first connection to Lord of the Rings, so that's why this was such a big, big part of the story. Um, in that way, uh, if I remember, somebody could correct me on the on the on the actual like trivia there, but uh, yeah, that whole Moriah thing is is him. Is is okay. the first time he started basically com- coming up with fake languages and what Lord of the Rings was based off of. Like that is this. So that by this whole thing was such a big deal for a lot of people. Right, right, okay, yeah, right. Um, and I just love like you know while all this is going on, you hear some some um you know just just. Saruman just doing some monologuing. I just love how he mentions, oh, well, you know the reason why you don't want to go through the minds of uh, Moria is because you know what lives down there, right? A creature yeah. of shadow and flame, shadow right? Shadow and flame. Which yeah. you'll get to in a bit, right? Yeah, that, that, uh, that, I, I forget, oh, I forget they used to have a lot of chapter titles in the show. They like pepper it in. But I think there's a chapter title. Okay, okay, okay. Did, yeah. Didn't know that actually, right? Yeah. yeah, so our heroes finally make it to, to, to Moria, right? Um, there's a cool scene where the, where the doorway is illuminate, illuminated, sorry, by moonlight. And, you know, there's this writer that says, speak, friend, and enter. Right. And it's literally like God, they spent like about an hour trying to figure out. Right. You know, he, he's doing all these these spell, these chants as well, too. And then, well, for right. you want to say, no, just speak, friend, the word friend and enter. What's right, right. what's elvish for friend, right? And, right. You know, it says right. It. So that, that, that word that's... I honestly thought that Gandalf was stolen because he didn't want to go inside. Right. Oh, yeah. That's, I that's thought he was a, stolen. I honestly thought he was stolen. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think, yeah, I think that that word friend was like one of the first things he came up with in terms of constructing an Elvish for the first time, you know. Because he was like the, one of the few people doing that, that whole Conlang culture you know, online. Like we know, we well, today we all are accustomed to Dothraki and Klingon, but like, yeah, that was the first time he, they did that. And I think that was, that was like why it's such a big deal in the book. And a big, big oh, revered okay, scene in the movie. Yeah. Right. Okay, I see, I see. Right, so there's this great reveal, though. is is one that, that hits, you know, like yeah. the more you think about it, where Gimli is showing up, he, he's expected to see his cousin Balin and other dwarves. Right. Uh, yeah. Are you just seeing just corpses, just skeletons and armor and arrows in particular, you know, we've been yeah. stuck in that arrow and, oh, sorry, in that armor. And it's just how Gimli reacts to, like, is that... Uh, a terribly tragic scene, though, where you feel it in him, though, especially we how he reacts. So, um, and this you know, while no, the hobbits, this, this is no mine; it's a tomb. Yes, yeah. Yeah, I love that line, right? And then while the hobbits like slowly walking back out the the, the mine, though, um, and perfect, you know, set it up the uh, foreshadowing. I should say, well, 
yeah, it's just set it up of what to come now. There's something in the the river or just in the lake behind them. And as they back out, you know, we through the woods, um, yanked now by this large head to clearly realize, oh, it's like this large, like octopus kind of character, right? The so, watcher Boromir, in the water. The watcher yeah. in the water, that's what it's called. Right. Watcher in the water, okay. Because they the never see where it is. Right, which which makes sense. Let's see what this is. Just tell you, oh, it's a threat, and this is why you should be scared, right? Uh, Boromir and Legolas show up in the nick of time, and you know they just see Frodo from being swallowed by this creature, right? Um, in the extended version, they learn that the mines of uh, Moria were known for its mitral, right? The same metal that makes uh, Frodo shoot, right? Right. Uh, it's a moment where the, the the fellowship takes a little break from walking, and Frodo spots Gollum, right? So he's sneaking through the mine. Um, later on, we get this. Uh, truly brilliant chick just into his bill intention where our heroes have to like both evade and defend themselves from a horde of orcs right who just so happen to have a cave troll right mm-hmm. uh, and just that action sequence works too especially the way how they take down the cave troll is pretty awesome in my opinion I mean, in the process Frodo gets stabbed by the troll yeah that's a, that's a thing Frodo just gets stabbed in this show right yeah, <laughs> but yeah. thankfully the material you know saves it right so that, that was great right and it's, it's, well, it's, it's plot armor. It's plot armor. Yeah, it has yeah, Frodo alive. Plot armor. Yeah, that that that's exactly where it is, right? So yeah, um, now our heroes have to get to well the bridge of Casa Doom, right? And the orcs just had to give chase. Chase, sorry. Mm-hmm. And this yeah. is great moment. This great white shot where you see the characters running and you see all these orcs chasing them. Then you take it. Oh, they're just on the ground, and you look at the pillars, you just see them coming down from the, yeah, from like the roof. Comes, they're down coming the pillars. From the ceiling, and they're, like, they're coming from what? the ceiling, it's like, oh shit. Yeah, it's again, like, this, this, sh- yeah, this show just knows we how to build tension. Pip, it's how Pippin caused all that to happen. Yeah, yeah, because he, he knocks the armor down to this, uh, this, this, this pit, right? Thomas. Anyway. <laughs> so, Why don't you try yourself in next time, rid of your stupidity? <laughs> Yeah, I, I love how 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 oh gosh how 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 God that's it's, 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 it's how he hits him with the, the staff too. I love too. I just love how you know God just he just have enough. This it's like dude, stop stop playing the ass. You know what I mean? But yeah, um, so when the orcs now finally surround the fellowship, now they hear a noise and then they, well, it just sends them scampering, right? And it's exactly what God of feared it be, right? You know, a Balrog, which still, in my opinion. Is one of the most fearsome creatures I've seen yeah. in this in this trilogy. Just yeah. the design of it, it looks devilish, you know what I mean? Just yeah. with the flames and yeah, the great. I love yeah. that. Yeah. Um this eventually is- though they make it to the bridge yeah. and Gandalf stays back to sleep. The, the Balrog, right? And it's just you know, you get that, you know, the, the iconic last word from Gandalf. So I just read it off here. You cannot pass. I am a servant of the secret fire, wield of the flames of Anor. The dark yeah. fire will not avail you, flame of Udon. Again, just bring the performance yeah. by, by Ian McKellen. We always sell it, right? Yeah. Go back to the shadow. And that then, you know... Been, that, that should have been his, his Oscar clip, by the way. Yeah, Dick. I know, right? <laughs> that should have been his Oscar clip. Why, why wasn't Ian nominated for Best Supporting Actor for this? He was. I, I, I he, was. he was. He was. He was nominated. Oh. Okay, okay, I didn't know that actually, you know, I didn't, I didn't know, I didn't know. Um, right, so the, the Balrog pulls out his, his whip now, this fiery whip now. Yeah. Then Galdorf dropped the line. You shall not pass. <laughs> Slams his staff onto the bridge, though. The Balrog attempts to hit him with the whip, but the bridge underneath him crumbles and he falls, right? And seeing this for the first time in, the, in, in cinema, guys, yeah, I don't know if it's the for you all, right? Is when the whip comes and wraps around um, Gandalf's, uh, Gandalf's leg. leg yeah. thread. Collect, the collective gasp from, from everyone. Everybody's like, <gasps> Like, I had all the most shock when that happened to her. And it's one thing you forget to as well is that he drops the, the, the force of the pulmonar. He drops the staff and the sword that he had in his hand. Because what does he say? Take him one more wait now. Why he couldn't use his staff to save himself? It's like, no, he drops it there. And then Gandalf, you know, does the line. Well, before before I get to the line, though, is Frodo's reaction to that Gandalf. Yeah. And mm-hmm. then Gandalf does the fly, you fools, and drops mm-hmm. off away. And, well, we'll see what happens to him at the very beginning of the Two Towers, right? right? But, yeah, that is such a gut punch of a moment, though, seeing him fall, because we all was thinking, that's it, like, Gandalf is dead, you know what I mean? And it's just how everybody has to run through the way, no! And everybody just running away, and the arrows just hit, um, you know, trying to avoid the arrows and all that kind of stuff. It's just really a powerful scene, guys. I don't know if you all have, a, have anything else to say about it. No, it was. 
Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, 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 no, yeah you're covered it. I mean, like, yeah, that was good. Yeah, hard, real hard. Like, it's like, yeah, like it's classic. real hard, though. Yeah. <laughs> He then, shows that even how powerful Gandalf is, his guy dropped there. Yeah. You know? Yeah. He yeah. turned his back too soon. And that is when everything happens and the Balrog pulled him down and yeah. Mm-hmm. Exactly, yeah, like, yeah. But even a strongest a strongest person shouldn't just walk away just so you have to make sure your enemy is completely dead. down. Yeah, yeah. completely dead. Yeah. Like, 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 like wait for the booth. When they hit the floor, yeah. right? Don't yes. you know? Yeah. They just turn your back, right? Well, well, it's, 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 yeah, no, when the decks up, take it, see how goddamn deep that pit is, like, oh, nah, that, like, that would be a long way to it. So, um, yes, boy, I, I remember seeing that in the opening of two towers. I was like, my God, how yeah. deep is that? That's a bistro. Like, look how you know, that, that was, it almost as it is, it almost as deep as as long as the 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 um the runway in Fast and Furious Six, right? You know, oh yeah, like, <laughs> <laughs> longer, probably longer. Yeah. You know, yeah, probably, probably. Again, probably might just keep mantle all this. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's how it felt. It's just pretty mm. much like going straight down. And then, like, wherever you're going back up or whatever it is. Anyway, yeah, go ahead. Right, so, so back to the show, right? So our heroes decide they have to uh, move on now to the forest of Lot Lorien. If I got the name wrong, forgive me. Uh, and her, I love how Ghibli says, uh, this is Elf Witch of Terrible Power who lives there, right? Yeah. And it's like, you know, I, I forget what it is. He says uh, he... You know, he has eyes, he has, uh, uh, he has eyes ears a, like a fox or something like that. The eyes of a hawk and the ears of a fox. Yeah. 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 And just, and just the, imagery, <laughs> just, just just smart imagery, having the these arrowheads show up um, off the corners of the as, scene. Yeah. I love that. As soon as, he says, as soon as he says ears of a fox and he turns his head back, you don't see the arrow in his face. <laughs> Yeah, and it's his reaction. It's just like, oh. <laughs> it's like that. It's not like a, it's just like a, oh. Yeah. I love the that. I love that, the, right? The dwarf breathes so loud, you could have shot him in the dark. You know? Yes. <laughs> who, who is who is that uh, character's name again? Um, uh, I, I forgot his Halder, name. Halder, Halder of Lorian. Halder right. of Lorian. Okay. Ca- a ca- thing, um, because I actually rewatch it. Um, You don't ever see his name, so I was waiting for him to see I am um, so, so, so. No, I think he did say his name or not. No, it's right, Ar- Ar- Aragorn. Who is Aragorn? Who says it? Aragorn okay. says it. Right. Oh, okay, and okay. Calder of Lorien. He says it again. I think in Two Towers. Mm. Right, right. Okay, okay. But do you know him, Matthew, from um from from Pirates of the Caribbean as well? Yes, right. yes, yes. Right. I, I remember. Yeah, that just that that feast that sort of stuck up. <laughs> he was what, in, the second, in the second film, the villain in the second yeah. film. Yeah, yeah. Right. Second, yeah, third. second yeah, third. Second and third. When the ship again blew up, and he was yeah. like, says that guy. Yeah, that, that, that guy. Yeah. He had a, right, he had a the East Indian company. That's right. Yeah, exactly. Right. Right. Yeah, right. 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 Okay. Right. So the fellowship is taken to forgive me for butcher the name, Karas Galdahon. Mm-hmm. Or Galdahon, right? Uh realm of Lord Celeborn and Galadriel, right? AKA mm-hmm. the, the so called elf witch, right? Lady of Light, right? Um, there's a hint mm-hmm. as to Gandalf's outcome. Maybe I'm wrong, but this is how I read it. Where Galadriel says he didn't pass the borders of this land. He's fallen into shadow. So, like, what they think about it's like, technically, he's dead, but not dead. Because, you know, you know the whole idea is, like, set it up. Like, yeah. oh, eventually, you go to this this place when you die or when you're about to die. Now. So, because he hasn't passed there as yet, he right. still has a as chance. A, so, as so a, those, as a, yeah. when, when seeing the, the, see the film at the time, I again, I thought he was a guy who went to the afterlife and came back. No, he's a... Uh, Angel who came down and then went back up to change. And well, the whole he had to get his new, his new rank up, right? Um, <laughs> so that, that was the reason for that. They're like, again, there's a sort of extra nonsense that he, the book cut, the, sorry, the movie cuts. That's a good cut, right? Yeah. I, I'd rather be confused about that than, 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 than having fluid stuff, you know. Ambiguity, yeah. exactly. Ambiguity. ambiguity, right? And then and also, then also, she says his deeds weren't needless and they don't know his full purpose as yet. It's like, oh, okay, okay. That, that mean that, that, you know, there's still, there's still, we, we, we shouldn't write off um, Gandalf as yet, right? Right. So there's a great moment where uh, Frodo tries to give Galadriel the ring, right? And right. then she admits, well, you know, she's, she's always wanted this, this ring, right? And then eventually she becomes overwhelmed by it as well too. Right. And by the way, this, uh, you know, as I said before, this was my introduction to, to Kate, to Kate Blanchett, right? So, yeah. um, Look at it. No, it's a great performance. Don't get me wrong, eh? But it's one of those things that you know people who I guess aren't into into the material might think is laughable, like the way how she talks, 
like you know look into the look into the water and you know you will see things that were things that are and things that haven't been you know what i mean like the way how she moves and whatnot some people might look at it and find it to be laughable though but i thought that she she kneels it though she kneels that whole wise you know elderly elf character even though she's not she doesn't look that she doesn't look elderly in my opinion right, right? Well, yeah but it totally works right yep. um so, 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 present and the future things that yeah, right, past, present, and future and things what, what that are, have not been about well yeah what, what i like about this this sequence is the whole all right well you know the, the whole point of the the, the 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 um the hobbits is that yeah you know the worst you're gonna get is 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 smeagol right like in terms of the corruption from the ring uh, they make them more or less the best best possible candidates for this stuff. But I, I like how how the corruption of the ring could manifest in any way, which form. Because a lot of people argue, well, he, she should have got the ring. That would have been a problem. What would have been the worst possible situation? And right. it's kind of hard to work that out. A lot of people like have great speculations as to what would have happened. Um, you know, if she got the ring, like we kind of kind of have a clear idea of what will happen if any human gets it. What what no, was it exactly? What, what would happen exactly? Like nature, right? Nature would just consume. She said, she said in a place, um, in a, as she quotes, right? As a quote, in, in place of a dark lord, you will have a queen. Oh, you will have a queen, yes. Not right. dark, yeah. but beautiful and terrible as the dawn, treacherous as the sea, stronger than, than the foundations of the earth. Right. Yes, um, that, that's, that's actually what she says. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. All the love me and despair, yeah. Right. And what, so what she, that? She would be, she would be beautiful. Right. But she would bring. The same kind of evil. Okay. I, I always got the sense that, well, the one speculation I always got the sense was a, she would just use nature to take over everything. Like, it'll just, nature will just grow out and it'll, won't have space for any other living creature other than trees, effectively, or something like that. Like, that's how I interpret that. Anyway, because but, you associate the elves with um, forests. Right, right. Or right. something like but that. So, like, all, corrupted. everything will grow out. Right. Men were corrupted. You see right. what happened. So they, they became Ross. Right. Right. Um, we never seen whatever actually happened to the dwarves. They just met the demise. Right. Right. Um, so the dwarves was there. Right. So it's only elves, and the elves didn't let the ring corrupt them. Right. Right. But Sauron was somewhat similar to an elf. Right. Right. Well, yeah, I forget right. what he what he is exactly with, with his relationship to Melkor. And he's, uh, what is that? Was that uh, Aya or Mania? Uh, somebody could. Claim up the, the old mythology of Lord Rings. I didn't read that bullshit in a long time. Um, yeah, trust me, I forgot myself. <laughs> right. But he's like a he was a slave to Melkor, but he was not that, and there's a whole thing. But he's not really an elf. Like he's not he's uh like a, like the equivalent of an angel or whatever you call that. Or some kind he's of fallen fall, angel. Some kind of fallen angel. Yeah. Right, something the equivalent to that, right? Uh, you know, because there are a lot of allusions to Christianity uh, or you know, with old Old Testament stuff, right? So it's um, yeah. er- Eruel Avatar and, and all of these characters or whatever it is, right? Anyway, uh, right. back to the show. <laughs> right, back to the show, right? So um, a little bit of ambiguity here where she says, you know, she passed the test, she'll diminish and go into the West and remain Galadriel, right? So I guess it's one of those, you know, moments where, you know, if you're ready book, you'll be like, oh, this is what it meant, right? Well, this right. is what it means, sorry, right? right, um, right. And But you know, before that scene ends, though, she drops one of my favorite lines in the movie, which is even the smallest person could change the course of the future. I just yeah. love that. That that line just hits me so hard. Though. Yeah, good line. That 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 the 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 um oh gosh the conversation scene in the mind with um with Gandalf and and Frodo, where basically where he says you know like he he wished this thing didn't he wished the ring didn't come to him. He wished none of this happened. I do he uh, well this paraphrase here. You know, Gandalf says you know it's just a matter of what you do with your time, right? That that line in particular, though, just just hit me real hard, like hit me deep, though. Um, especially when it comes up at the very end when it's repeated, I was like, yeah, right to the gut, right. Um, so meanwhile, now Saruman tells one of the Urukai that you know, well, you know, orcs were once elves, right, who were taken by the dark powers and you know, tortured and mutilated, but Saruman more or less perfected the the creation of the orcs, right? So he called them the the Urukai. This is actually the first time that, that he hear the name, right? Um so he orders them to well to bring the halflings to him alive and unharmed and yeah to kill everybody else basically right so uh before the fellowship departs now they, they go by boat to go to Mordor um Galadriel gives them some gifts right so um Sam gets Elven rope Mary and Pippa gets Elven daggers Legolas get a new bow because like hey my old bow 
Cool, you know, but if I can get a new one, please. And the guy was like, hey, thanks, right? <laughs> um, and we don't really know what, what Ghibli got, though. We'll learn in a, in a couple of minutes. Um, Aragon, well, he already had the um, the, the, the Evan star. And, you know, well, Frodo is given the light of Arendelle, um, their most beloved star, right? Um, and then, well, Ghibli really reveals later on that all he wanted was one hair from a golden head. Poof. And then he gets three. Perv. <laughs> I know it's just it's just such a perv. You like you are just so gorgeous. I just want one right. hair of your golden head. <laughs> well, again, I'll just start where you coming from, well, right? You, you, it, it you makes run sense it? You run it? You how... run it? Sorry, it, it, it makes sense because earlier on is like, oh, she that elf witch, but the moment he sees her, like, right. oh my god, I'm in love. You know what I mean? So right. it, it really works. It right. works, right? And I always, I always, I always thought he did run an interpretation is that you know, dwarves obsessed with gold now. Um. Oh, yeah, yeah that's mm. a thing. And well, Tolkien has a, uh, a little uncomfortable in retrospect kind of thing because dwarves supposed to be Semitic peoples. And uh, yeah, that, okay. that, yeah, okay. yeah, that, yeah, 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 tug on, tug on the color for that one, right? But yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So when you, yeah, little, when, you, when you dig a little deeper, you see how offensive it actually is. A little bit. It, look, I, I, mean, <laughs> I can't say it's too, it too, too offensive, but it's tone deaf at best, right? Let us see that. Yeah, but yeah. Um, so th- there's a lot of that there. Anyway. Yeah, right, right. So we got another great moment. There's just so much great moments in this movie, right? Um, where Frodo runs into Boromir collecting firewood, right? Because they take a little break from, you know, um, from, from ruin towards uh, Mordor, right? Um, and, you know, like earlier on, Frodo was, was warned, not just by Gandalf, by Galadriel, basically not to trust this man, right? So when Boromir asks for the ring and he's like, oh, I need to help save my people from Sora, right? And, you know, we, we, we love to, to, to dump on uh, Boromir, right? But in terms of his motivation, it makes sense, right? Because he's basically see he because the uh, I believe this was in the extended cut too, where he was basically telling Aragorn like, no, dude, use the one, you're gonna be the king. But he's like, no, I don't want to do this, right? So Boromir is like, well, fine, if you want to do it, well, cool, because I had to save my people, right? So you get his motivation, just the way how he goes about it is in a really douchey way. But yeah, he he attacks Frodo, he kind of forces him down to the ground. Uh, Frodo puts on the ring, he disappears and knocks him a little bit and then runs away, right? Um, so in the void now, as I call it, uh, Frodo sees Sauron's tower for the first time, he sees the eye, uh, he takes it off and he wakes up in this random spot. Um, Argon finds him. And you know, Frodo's all like, you know, like a little hesitant, but then he he gives he he offers Aragon the ring, but Aragon is almost tempted to take it. But he's like, you know, no, yeah, I'm 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 good. I I can't take it, right? Um, just then, you know, Frodo's sword lights up now, and orcs are nearby. Well, Urukai to be precise, right? Right. Uh, Frodo flees, and Aragon stays to fight the Urukai because he's a badass, right? Gimli and Legolas show up to assist Aragon because they're badasses. Even Boromir, who is a dick, and a, <laughs> but he yeah. shows up to make his badass. He fights as well too. Yeah. Unfortunately, um, the the Urukai squad leader, yeah. um, Ar- Ar- fires, you know, like Arrow three, time. Yeah, Arrow time. Like yeah. collect three shots though, like three arrows, yeah. right? Yeah, and yeah. torso. Um, Boromir, and again, sh- right? Sean Bean, Sean Bean playing ca- Sean Bean. Never, never, never surviving movies though. Like, right, to be right. a, a ticket start of a golden eye, like, and then golden eye, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. Terrence was telling me that almost all, almost all the movies shown me acting, he has never, yeah, had a That's, role that he survived. Yeah, to yeah. Now, I'll never forget though, Game of yeah. Truths, ep- season one, episode nine. We all like, yeah, he got survived this. Nope, dead. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Sean being Sean being in a red shirt, right? You know, you know, <laughs> for real, for real, for real. <laughs> but. But I will lie though, Boromir went out like a badass to yeah, like, yeah. It's, it's a good death. It's a good stuff good fight to do. Yeah, he keeps great going, right? yeah. yeah, and again, you know what I mean? Because we, we like to dump on him because of how he was moving towards Frodo. But even in that one moment, it shows just how his 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 resolve now, like he he really wanted to save his people, Dred. So he was going out without a fight, Dred. So he had you had, had to give him you had to give his I was gonna say give him his flowers, right? But no, but you had to really applaud him for for like just standing up to these guys, you know what I mean? But just as you know, um the 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 Urukai, uh leader was going to, to to fire one more shot at him, Aragon shows up now and then they have this nice little sword fight between the two of yeah. them. I never forget how it ends though where you know the the Urukai gets decapitated. I'd see it it's still about the audience like boy let me just when he gets No, I, what was it he, he, he gets stabbed. He stabbed, he get pulled into the sword and he started to pull himself in and then Aragorn yeah. 
pulls it out and you yeah, pulls it out and yeah. and, and, and yeah. the cap titles. And yeah, 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 so you really get the sense of how strong Uruk are. Like you could just tank yeah. a damn sword attack in the stomach, easy, easy. So it's like, well, good. Yeah, and yeah, exactly. Formel d- decided to stand his grounds is when he he realized he got the sense came back to him that what he did Frodo right was wrong and yeah, I yeah, he stand, yeah yeah because he realized okay, he does he does apologize like, in the last right few months you know, so he went yeah, all out took a lot just right. to bring him home. yeah just a nice little redemption redemption that you know typical redemption I that stuff very cliched okay. but good yeah true okay. true. Yeah. Um. In the process, though, Mary and Pippin are captured by the Urukai. Yeah, you and we won't see what hobbits. happened to them until the next film. So yeah, they yeah. got the wrong hobbits. Yeah. <laughs> I they didn't. This, yeah. I don't think they knew that it was four hobbits that sat out. You know, they thought it right. was two. Just they say yeah. one of the hobbits. Right. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. He just thought it was two hobbits, and because you remember, I think Saruman would know that Gandalf and um sent. Frodo and Sam right. to yeah. the fans in Pony didn't know that Pippin and Mary would have been on the way with them. Right, right. So it was a good thing Pippin and Mary was there because it kind of was decoys in a way, if I could say that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Good point. Good point. Um, I forgot to mention too, you know, in Bormer's last words though. Um, wrote it down, you know what I mean? I would have followed you, my brother, my captain, my king. Perfect foreshadowing for the other two films. I love that, right? Uh, meanwhile, no Frodo, who is just distraught, he just kind of given up at this. No, sorry, actually, I like he he is he doesn't give up at this. He's he's to the point of giving up, but he remembers that um, speech that um, that Gandalf gives him in in in, in Moria, right? In Moria, sorry. Um, and yeah, he just decides here's what if I had to do this on my own. Sorry, what what's the line? Sorry. All you have to decide is what to do with the time that has been given to you. Yes, yeah. which I, I love that line. Uh, just that particular, when when it's played again in a particular moment and the music, how it swells there. Yeah, almost, almost brought the mantis out of it. Almost did, because yeah. ah, I could just so relate to that, especially with how, you know, stressful life could be, right? But whatever. Yeah, so he says, here's what he I... Des- he decides to go off on his own because of the yeah. warning that Galadriel gave him. That the ring is go- eventually gonna corrupt everybody in the in the fellowship. So it's yes, better right, to go right, up yeah. on your own. Yeah, right. Yeah. And um emotion doesn't stop there, but because while Frodo is riding off, um Sam follows him through the, the river and then you know he he, he drowns now, like he, he he can't swim then. And then you have just have that nice shot. I mean it's derivative, but it's a great shot though, where Frodo Did jumps you know in what the, happened to see him. Um, what's this guy name? Did you know what happened? Uh, Sean to the Asset. Guy? Yeah, when he when he ran into the um the water there. What happened? They well remember they have to secure the scene before they film, right? For any mm-hmm. debris or anything that could cause injury to the actors. When they swept the the, the, the river, they thought they got um all the sharp pieces of glass and thing out and they missed one. Oh dear. And when he ran in, cut his foot. Damn. Ah, oh, <laughs> Oh, I, I, talk about commitment, but you would see it. Though. You would see it on <laughs> screen, though. But yeah, yeah. Um, that 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 scene though is is very emotional, though. Um, and you know, it just shows just how you know, just just Sam's will do this, just his resolve. You know, he's just like you know, God enough told me to take care of you, to look after you. Jen. That's what I'm gonna do, man. You know what I mean? So I love that. I love that. Besides, he was he's technically a, a wingman of sorts because you know he was trying to, to hook up with the you know the, uh, this girl Rose. I believe her name is is Rose or Rosie? It was just Rose. Rosie. Rosie, Rosie. Yeah, at, at, at the tavern back in in Hobbiton, which you know we'll see what happens at the very end of the of the trilogy, right? So yeah, um, Sam and Frodo continue their duty to Mordor while Gimli, Aragorn, and Legolas head out to see if Merry and Pippin, right? I never forget, like, just as I said in the very beginning, like when the movie like wraps up at that particular point and you see directed by Peter Jackson, people like, wait, what? That's it? <laughs> well, because you just get so invested in the story, so it just stops yeah. there. It's like, wait, that's yeah. it, okay? Yeah, but yeah. no lie, it's a perfect point. It's a perfect great pl- yeah. uh, moment to stop at. You know what I mean? So you you, you get a year long break, and then the story continues on from there. So I think this right. is like the first time for me that I've seen um a trilogy play out like that. Because normally, like with say like Godfather or like Matrix, you know, they they are these self contained stories, right? So when you have the sequel, it's like okay. It follows up from there, all right. But this to me was the first time I ever saw a story stop and 
you know, te- it was a literal to be continued. That's what it was, right? But instead of to be continued, mm-hmm. you saw directed by Peter Jackson. I, I think this was like the first time for many people seeing that, right? But you know, you think about it, you, you sat for three hours, right? Like people would have just been like a tired, let me just leave them. But when they saw that, they were like, ah, oh, we want to see more now. That's just a testament yeah. to how great this, this movie was, right? So in closing, right? Um, just my final thoughts and reading. Um this to me is just an absolute brilliant film from start to end though, in terms of will building because like I said, I went into this will not knowing anything about, about Hobbits and you know uh, right. Sauron and the war Sauron, sorry, and the Wandering. I knew nothing about it. I, I got a gist of what the story was about through the through the trailers and I just went in and the show just beautifully illustrated it. It was easy for me to jump into this world and understand who these characters were, their motivations, all that kind of stuff. Um Look at that to 20 years for the moment, from, from what I saw that. Just to keep in mind, yes, I have watched it like on cable and when I acquired it on Blu-ray and stuff like that, right? But honestly, I haven't seen the show in like about four or five years, right? But still, look at it now with fresh eyes, though. It is truly amazing how the show holds up. Eh? This is like 20 years old, right? The visuals still hold up. Um, perfect location, um, choices of location. Just the mere fact that they, they, they chose all these gorgeous locales in New Zealand to shoot this film was just a perfect choice. You know what I mean? Uh, Peter Jackson, though, this this was him, like, this led people know, yo, I, I could be wrong in the greats, you know, I'm I, not just a guy who makes, you know, schlocky horror films like what I did back in the day. He's like, I am a legit real, like, you know, like, I, I, I am destined to be one of the greats. So I would say that this film is the one that you know, any other trilogy, and the, the rest of the films in the trilogy, this trilogy here, yeah, like, he is one of the greatest, and it's thanks to this film here. Um, the character uh sorry the 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 acting superb um you know the the casting superb music how it's scored he just knocked it out the park with this film here and the other films in the trilogy here this is one of the best scores i've ever heard in my life it's just so effective though, especially the more you know terrifying scenes and the last thing i'll say before i get to read it what this show kneels here this particular entry in the the, the um trilogy kneels here is that tension is that fear yeah. there's that danger like if the drop the ball at any point in time or if they feel this mission that is it you know so you feel the stakes right that is even more impressive see this for the you know because this is the first i mean this is wilderness so it's like you're not learning about characters or whatnot but they just say you know boom if this ring falls in the wrong hand or if they don't get rid of this ring in time it's death it's destruction right and they set that up so brilliantly bad so yeah um so as I get to rate it now, I would say, because it's easy for me to give this a 5 out of 5, right? But the beauty of this whole trilogy is that, and you all could agree to disagree, is that the other films just got substantially better. Just like a little bit more, just like a little bit more, right? So yeah. like the up there, but like each one just kind of builds on the other. So right. I just lay like, you know right off the bat, Return of the King is an absolute 5 out of 5, a 10 out of 10. Uh, but as far as like this film here, I'm going to give this a light four and a half out of five man um and the two towers gets a decent four and a half out of five which is just a little much up from light right and you know the the return of the king is just perfection in my opinion five out of five right there right but yeah as far as wheel building as far as taking us into this beloved wheel peter jacks just knocked out the park this is a film that people will look at for years and years and years to come um and yeah i just absolutely love this film here so uh Marisha, final thoughts and rating on fellowship of the ring can't go playing it was good. It was, I wouldn't say four, five and a half. Um, maybe five and a half, four and a half, five, yeah. Um, Wait, five and a half, four to five? <laughs> yeah, I was like, good. Okay, five and a half, it. four and a half, right? Uh, it was good. To me, it was good, yeah. Okay. I would actually keep it at five and a half, right, honestly. But um, yeah. in two hours, the, 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 um, it was solely about um, Helm's Deep and the Battle of Helm's Deep. Right. One that, of the best battle sequences ever put to screen. Damn yes. right. Damn right. And you know how long that um that that whole fight scene went on, like the war itself there in the book. It took like oh. about a week. You know, they were fighting for like about a week, you know. Right, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And the movie is like what? Like a like a couple uh, of it's one, it's one night, it's one night in the movie. It's one, one night, night, one night, yeah. yeah it ends at, yeah, at, at, uh, at dawn. Right. At dawn, yeah. Yeah. But Ghana fell at dawn on the sixth day at dawn. Look to the east. Right. <laughs> so you thinking you thinking that whole that whole um fight and and, and 
in Helm's Deep was one day or a couple of hours. Yeah, that was yeah. like a week. Right. Yeah. Uh, changes. Yeah. And then you then you you leave that fight, that 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 whole war there in Helm's Deep, and you move across to the return of the king. And it, that battle there at Minas Tirith in front of Gondor. Yeah. That was, my my, yeah. my god, that, that was an event. Right? Like just that whole movie as a whole was an event. That was just like something that you know you just sat for three and a half hours and you were just amazed by it, right? You know. But uh five five and a half out of five. Uh, I love that right. reach in the other right? But uh let's just quick just want to say before we get to your final thoughts, um uh Ricardo, is that one thing that this show will will um will always be remembered for in my opinion was how you know the just how vfx was just the the standard of vfx being raised at this point in time yeah. man, you know what i mean because mm-hmm. i would say you know Pete, um uh sorry james cameron was already the, the the um you know what the, the was at the forefront of just taking you know vfx and just using it to tell great stories right what is um you know to meet two or titanic right but this one was like now nah, we just gonna take this even further right and you know to, touch on titanic for a bit we're going to have you sit down for three hours and watch this thing. And you're not going to complain about it at all, right? So, yeah, this was like the, the epic film just being um, brought back again. You know what I mean? But in this case, true, this brilliant, this gorgeous, this glorious, I should say, uh, fantasy story, right? Uh, Ricardo, final thoughts and rating on um, Fellowship of the Ring. Yeah, man, it's, it's, it's totally, it totally holds up in my opinion. Um, just, you know, again, just uh, for me, it was just... A, a master look at craftsmanship on average like just again little simple things that you force perspective just great editing and, and sequencing great tension how to build it um as i said you know you 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 i consider this in terms of as a film from that craftsmanship standpoint in my opinion is my is the strongest of the trilogy in my opinion it's not my favorite right return of the king is my personal favorite but that's right. the one i had the most fun with but this one is the one that just you know, just watching it as a just from a, a, a film production standpoint, yes, you know, all yes, the shit okay. they had to went through to get it done. You know, it was just one of these big things because again, this could have easily, easily fail. Like, you know, if you if if you know the if some of the production stuff zig instead of zag, it could have easily been a massive disaster rolling into theaters, but it wasn't. Um, it just it just, you know, they made a lot of right decisions, they just got stuff working on set. And yeah, it just just fantastic overall. Yeah, uh, rating for me, uh, uh, nine out of ten. Um, absolutely nice. loved it. Loved it. Loved it when I saw it at the first time. Uh, with every subsequent re- rewatch and with both extended and theatrical cuts, they both work. Um, we could get into we we already get into the super debates as to which one is better in terms of theatrical or, or extended cut. I know oh. hardcore purist types, or at least uh, what what people like to call themselves as purists, prefer the extended. But I actually prefer the, the theatrical cut to be honest. Um, okay. In that sense, I, I I prefer the extended in my opinion because right. it, it it tells more and but you understand why right. it was cut because you know of, of right. time basically right, but, right, uh, right, right. yeah why why you think the charge colors better yeah no just just from a just from a pacing standpoint just pacing flowing you you know you understand why stuff was cut that kind of thing I again for me a story have to be I I am you know I like I do like fat right you have to cut that to the bone. And mm-hmm. then have it lean, and once you have, it, and it was it was good enough, like for what it is. Again, not perfect. Again, if you if you're a big nitpicker and you want to fight down whether or not Tom Bomber they'll need to need it to be in the movie. All right, fine. But like I I can I can I mean I can I'll just leave you there with an argument. I'll just agree to disagree on on something like that. I don't think he, he somebody who just stopped the story dead, and it was a, a much better call to just cut him out entirely and just basically have him not exist or so something like that. And it, he made. Jackson and, and, and company made a bunch of choices like that all over the all over the, the film and it just worked, in my opinion. Um yeah, yeah, nine out of ten, loved it, great film. All right, and last but not least, Daniel, final thoughts and rating on Fellowship of the Ring. Twenty years, man. Can you believe it's twenty years? I <laughs> know, right? <laughs> <laughs> twenty years. But yeah. Um what honestly? What makes a good movie adaptation of a of a popular property? You need to get it. You need to get the essence, the flavor. And this movie, like, definitely did that. It it got the essence. It got the flavor. I mean, think about this. How come Chronicles of Narnia sucked? Because it was a literal translation. Uh, I, I, I actually, I, 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 I somewhat don't hate it <laughs> Those <Yeah. movies. laughs> right. But yeah, they kind of. No, but, but but I agree. They 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 not as good as they, they could have been. But um, right. I would say compared to Lord of the Rings, I actually read the, the Chronicles of Narnia books like before the, the movies came out. Um, right. the, the the movies still the way they do is is kind of unfortunate, I guess. But 
yeah. Well, that's a that's another that's another conversation for another day. But yeah, yeah. And I mean, think of and why does Spider Man work? Because it's a it's right. a you're just getting the essence of the character. You're getting yeah, the essence exactly. of the source material. Yeah. So that's why it works. And um, yeah, this is just this is just a great movie. Great movie. And my rating, I would give it a nine out of ten. Nine out of yeah. ten. It was just a perfect film. Well, nice. There is no such thing as a perfect film, but it yeah. comes close. It comes close. Right. Yeah, it does. It does. It does. And um, I forgot to mention one one more thing, right? One more thing before we part ways, right? Um, I remember like after the after the trilogy ended, you know, I mean how the you know this is before the the Hobbit trilogy was a thing. Um, how they how they kept the franchise going as well too, right? So I remember yeah. there was these video games which I still haven't played, right? Oh no, like what that that's coming out. Um, I think what is this called? That Lord of the Rings Online or something? It was one that it was just like about the world itself. Um. I forget okay, what it was. So something for middle, little something. Yeah, a lot, of, a lot, a lot of games fluctuates in terms of quality, but I, pong for pong, a lot of people prefer like really like the Shadows of Mordor franchise. That's uh, right. That's a, it. Shadows of Shadows of Mordor. Shadows of Mordor. Right. Shadows of Mordor. It have a couple of games that it have. What? Why? Why it kind of brilliant? A lot of people like it. Have this kind of um, rival system. So you have a person that is a rival. You have to kill, and if you if you do kill the rival, it gets stronger over time, and have a whole like really dynamic gaming system. There, it's, it's actually quite 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 inspired. Um, that's that, that's thing. All the other games is just normal, you know, fighting problem. But yeah, but this one is actually quite special. Yeah, I do recommend Shadows of Mordor. Fantastic game. All right, all right. Yeah. And uh, well, you know, just a couple of days at the time of us recording this. Um, uh, the Lord of the Rings Gollum. <laughs> I'm actually right. share this with uh, with with Risha or Fiedo. Um. I, I I like the concept of it. I, I like that it's falling up right after um Gollum's capture by the orcs and him getting tortured, him breaking out. Like that that's cool though. And I, I think it might be a rated M game, which is pretty intriguing. But um yeah. yeah. yeah that that's what they set it up basically, right? But it's it's how to tell a full game through Gollum. That that might be really interesting though, but I think they might play on the whole duality aspect of it. I think that'll be a nice way to um to make it work though, but I don't know, like what Gollum's gonna do, like like take rocks and knock people's heads in, or like what, well, or eat fish, raw fish, like I don't mm-hmm. know, like like what what the what the yeah, gist of the game is no, gonna that, be. That, I, that's, I that's talk, you gotta talk, talk to yourself, right? Talk to your split yeah, person. Gollum, right? Gollum. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I, 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 I don't know. That's exactly what happened. <laughs> and that was that was exactly what happened. I was watching the little trailer for the game. Yeah, that's it's a like telltale. Yeah, yeah that's, just do it like a telltale game, right? And it, just, just you and he talking. You and Smigal and Gollum, they're two characters. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, we choose your character, Gollum or Smigal. But, yeah. but I wouldn't like the graphics for Gollum, the way they designed him. He looked kind of... Right. Um, not so Gollum, if I can say that. <laughs> he looked more chubby. Uh, uh, he was chubby. Um, I, I think it's because... Um, if if he means as you say chubby, I think it's because he have more. He look like he have more meat on his bones. Like that's the best way I can describe it. Yeah, chubby, but yeah, <laughs> yeah, he does. He does. I, I I don't know. I don't know. But but he all he all look legit. Yeah, because it's it's all it like, like yeah yeah it looks like <laughs> it's all you know. Yeah, but I, I just like just touching on that trailer where, where the story begins, or I assume this is where the story begins. I don't think we had to see, well, this is how he became Gollum, because, oh gosh, we had the trilogy to, to do that, right? But yes, folks, um, this was us talking about Lord of the Rings, the Fellowship of the Ring, um, 20 years, but wow, goddamn, man. Right? Um, and I imagine, you know what I mean, 20, 30 years from now, this this film is going to continue to inspire, you know, filmmakers and, you know, writers like like me and Ricardo and um, and, and Daniel, uh, inspire, you know, fantasy buffs and, you know, just bookworms like Nerisha, you know what I mean, and, you know, it'll just continue to just inspire and you know just just captivate audiences for years to come man so yeah peter jackson did this did this thing though i mean there's the hobbit trilogy that still exists but <laughs> about that last time about that and then i'll shut up right i know there is the the middle earth um box set right now in well 4k right i don't have a 4k players yet but um i i buy that in a heart though, because yeah again both trilogies in 4k I, i'd buy that and actually like i i actually wouldn't mind watching that whole story play out from the Hobbit to um to to you know um the Return of the King. I never did it before. I just kind of watched them individually, but I won't mind it kind of watched it chronologically and seeing if it makes sense or not, right? But yeah, we'll see. 
Right. So no, what we normally do before we part ways is, you know, we just kind of plug ourselves. So we just let each other know where we could find ourselves online, right? So, uh, Ricardo, where, where, where can we find you online? I'm Passat, at Armedi on Twitter. That is at Armedi on Twitter, uh, RDM. And then you could type in Ricardo Medina on Facebook. You can find me there. All right. Uh, at the in the description to this episode here, you will find a link tree link. So once you go there, you will find my Facebook, my Instagram, my Twitter, my YouTube. So on the Facebook itself, you'll find the link to this podcast here, as well as you know BBB Radio and the other episodes of Retrospect Reviews and BS Beats and Bailey. Uh, Daniel, where can people find you online if you want to be found online at all? <laughs> well, yeah, you, you could find me on Facebook, Daniel Lam Young. And you could always find, and you can also find me on Instagram at Daniel Lamyong. Those are my two. Those are the two social media I I usually use. All right, and last but not least, Narisha, the water put you on the spot though, but uh, you know this is like your perfect chance to plug um, Apple Lily photography. Uh, for those who don't know, um, Narisha actually does some solid photography, man. You know what I mean on the side. Nice. So uh, nice, nice, you know, nice. Yeah. And you should keep doing yeah. it, though. You keep keep doing it. Keep doing it. Keep doing your thing. You know, we keep perfecting and honing your craft, right? Uh, so, yeah, Darisha, yeah. where can we find you online, including Apple Ap- Ap- Lily? You can find me at Deviant Just search um, mm-hmm. Apple Lily. Or on Facebook, Apple Lily Photography. All right. Nice, nice, nice. nice. Mm-hmm. So, guys, thanks for thanks so very much for, for, for coming through for, you know, this first Christmas special. You know, we, so, if God spare life, we could do, um, you know, the Two Towers and hopefully Return the King. Uh, you know, I, mean? I just can't wait to rewatch Return the King. I know I'm not going to watch it this year, though. I want to wait till the anniversary of that one um, shows up, which will be in a couple of years' time, right? Yep. And, yeah, that's pretty much about it. So, what's good, guys? Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night, whenever this is. This was Matthew Bailey and Narisha Sabdeen. Thank you so 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 very much for coming through. Thanks. You're supposed to say thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Daniel, thank you so much for coming through. No problem, man. It's a, it, it was a good time talking about this movie. I just I loved it. Yeah, it, it, it was. It, yeah, it was. It was fun talking about this. So, of course, Ricardo, thanks for coming through. No problem, brother. No yes. problem. Uh, this has been another episode of. BBB Radio slash Retrospect Reviews. This has been the first Christmas special. So yes, folks, you know, happy holidays. Merry Christmas. Happy Hanukkah. Don't drink a drive. Bring down the ham. And until the next one, guys, take care. Peace. Mm-hmm. Peace.